There you go. Hello, guys. So we are live right now. So sorry for <laughs> sorry for the delay. We just have some production issues that we went through. <laughs> but um, so I think let's just review on some comments. So we all we have some early joiners here. Uh, Shout out to shout out <laughs> professional ano na live seller right, to so Jonathan Chua, Albert Tang, Carlos Marfori, Bobby, Tim, uh, who else? Naitechi, um, uh, Benson na nagmamay na naman. <laughs> Wala pa kami binabenta. Um, Ate Lani Kenson, thank you for joining us, Miss Nelly. D Rosario, um, Isa, thank you for joining us. Um, Reagan, Reagan, papakita ko si Chong in a short while. Nagre-ready lang siya ng ano, <laughs> lighting. <laughs> And then, ayun, so yun na. So, so far we have 36 viewers. So again, guys, same with what we did um, last week. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to... Uh, post your questions, um, or if you have additional information about the topic that we are discussing, feel free to put it on the uh, comment section so that you know we can see it and then we can discuss it on the discussion. So again, I would like to welcome everyone. I don't want to prolong this anymore. I know all of you guys are excited. Um, hi, Miss Noemi. Hi, Sir Jojo. Thank you for joining. Pa share, share. Para madama tayong sales. <laughs> Ayun. Ayun. So, pa-share na lang sa mga pages nyo at sa mga groups nyo so that we can share um, this learning experience with them. Uh, because right now, our topic for our episode 3 is pest and resistance management. So, basically, we'll talk about all those pests and diseases uh, that our plants are uh, getting, especially it is already rainy season here in the Philippines. So we have to prepare for that battle. Okay. So without further ado, I would like to welcome everyone. Everyone, please welcome our co-host for today, Sir Dan. Sir Dan, hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's you again and then um our guest speaker for panis for this afternoon sir chong paslon please give sir chong a big round of applause everyone kahit hindi namin kayo marinig <laughs> Ayun, oh, so um we <laughs> But can I talk Because I need a TV. Again, so I would like to formally introduce them. So, sorry, Dan, for all of those people who probably have not known you yet, or hindi ko alam kung sino pa yung mga yun, uh, kindly introduce yourself. Ayan. Uh, hello, ako si Dan, and Living Gifts Nursery. Uh, we, we've been farming succulent and cat life for five years now. Uh, formerly, we were just uh, resellers or uh, retailers of a potted plant. Uh, but before that, I practiced agricultural research in the Philippine, in the Philippine Rice Research Institute. Uh, mainly on genetic resource sets, um, uh, curating traditional and hybrid rice varieties. We have different rice varieties all over the globe para magamit ang ating breeders for their breeding uh, uh, purposes. So, yung hinahanapan namin ng mga mga resistance to uh, different stresses like uh, drought stress, uh, flooding, talin tolerant varieties, uh, mga productive rice. So kami yung kami yung nag uh, uh, 
nagtatago sa gene bank ng human rights dati. Uh, ako yung uh, gene bank manager ng genetic resources division. So we kept the uh, rice varieties at uh, para magamit ng mga breeders natin dito sa Pinas and then we traded them with international agricultural researchers like uh, in US uh, we also uh, shipped our traditional varieties to Svalbard para may tago nila para magamit in the future and then ang um, other experience ko on this topic I uh, I trained I uh, ang training ko ed- educational background is in um, uh, agriculture a major in plant pathology tapos uh, so diseases yon diseases ng plants in a uh, agricultural setting tapos after that uh, trabaho ako sa Philippine Uh, under DA, Philippine Rights Research Institute. Mm. Uh, to test uh, ng mga varieties kung alin ang pwedeng magamit ng mga breeders for, for uh, mas matibay at mas productive na rice. And we also tested the chemicals and um, kasi ang feel right, sila yung uh, um, free approval for kung may gagamitin ka ng mga chemical on rice for example uh, organic or other pesticide or abono uh, bago ma-approve na uh, for open to the market uh, kailangan muna ng approval so feed rice will do the testing kung effective or safe gamitin yung agricultural input so after that Nagquit ako ng job ko doon and now practice uh, farming succulents and cacti. Yeah. Ayan. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And now we would like where is Sir Chong? Nawala si Sir Chong. Tayo lang muna dito for that. Oo. Um Medyo, yeah, nagpa-practice kami na um, medyo challenging ata ang connect to Sir Chong, but he will be with us um, shortly. So while we're waiting, Sir Dan, do you have anything else to share? Sa, sa topic na to, very challenging kasi ang cactus and succulents, uh, they're more used to arid conditions. The majority of cactus and succulents. So, dito sa Pilipinas, very wet, humid, and hot yung conditions natin. Very conducive to disease and diseases and uh, pests. So, dito sa atin, jungle. Jungle ang ating climate, yung uh, madaming plants. So, pag madaming plants, madaming pagkain din for pests. Mga insekto, uh, slugs, rat, mga ganyan. So, madami yung potential pests ng ating mga alaga. And uh, the more foliage, kailangan ng microbes to break down the organic matter. So, mas mataas din yung pathogens. Yung dami ng pathogens dito sa, sa uh, Pilipinas, dito sa ating climate. So, very challenging na mag-alaga ng cactus and succulents. Ayan. So, I think we, we already have Sir Chong. Uh, welcome back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, unstable yung connection ko. It, 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 okay. okay. So, you can Uh, Chong, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so if you can introduce yourself to us. Okay, okay, thank you. Yep. So, so uh, Chong here. So basically, uh, 
as a, as a background uh, relating to plants, uh, nasa R&D now for a uh, solid 10 years. So basically, uh, I'm working with uh, plant diseases and uh, insect pests uh, attacking plants. So my first job was on R&D in Highland Banana. So basically, yung ginagawa namin doon was uh, we try to diagnose diseases that is not common to the, the certain uh, elevation, which is the Highland. And after my two years spent on uh, R&D in Banana, is, I moved to Philippine Rice Research Institute from 2012 to 2014. And basically, yung ginagawa ko naman doon is uh, more on insect pest attacking rice, but our approach was more on biological control agents. So para siyang, uh, we tried to isolate uh, microbes, entomopathogenic fungi, fung fungi, which attacks insect pests. Yung ginagawa namin is, uh, kinukuha namin sila, dinadala sa laboratorio, pinapadami, tsaka binibigay namin sa farmers. So parang, parang we tried to mass produce this uh, beneficial fungi for the farmers to use. So... So after after my my experience in rice diseases and insect pests, I transferred to my current job today. So basically, from 2014 up to now. So again, still on research, pero ibang approach siya because I was part of the genetics and traits breeding team. So yung part ko naman don is I am. Uh, the, the researcher who conducts uh, trials on evaluation of different lines and hybrids resistant to specific uh, insect pests and uh, rice diseases. So it's more on like we create technology that can be used by the farmers without the use of pesticides. Because it's breeding on resistance of insect pests and diseases, meaning may genes na doon sa halaman na nilalagay namin that can combat the, the damage or the degree of infect, infection by the fungal or the bacterial diseases. And after four years in uh, genetics and traits, lumipat ako sa crop protection, which is, ito na ngayon, yung, yung hinawakan ko namang uh, experiment or trials is more on uh, biological control agents. Again, it's more up uh, on a biopongicide as well as uh, synthetic insecticide, synthetic herbicide, and uh, synthetic insecticides. So by profession, uh, I am a plant pathologist, but uh, I'm also working with uh, entomologists before. Kumuha kasi ako ng mga advanced uh, courses in entomology, specifically on uh, insect morphology, insect taxonomy, uh, insect ecology, kung Ecology meaning how insects interact with the climate or external factors that can affect their growth and development. And yon, uh, I started collecting cacti and succulent way back 2012. Pero yun nga kasi palipat-lipat ako ng, ng base kasi sa trabaho. So yung mga collection ko during field rice times na ikon ko dun sa, sa, sa Karaga region. And when I I move here in Jensan, in General Santo City, talagang I I arrange with the, the management na uh, I want to stay here in Jensan. Kaya sinimulan ko ulit yung yung pagkakolekta ng cacti and succulents. So that was 2014 up to now. And yun, uh, locally, may nag invite na din sa akin, uh, specifically in cacti group uh, with with the local groups here in, in Mindanao. So I started uh, speaking to the public way back 2018 in Davao, in Davao City. And yun nga, last year with uh, Sir Dan's uh, invitation to talk on the convention last year. And yeah, and ito, uh, the third time is medyo the new normal ika nga nila. It's on a, you know, uh, interactive uh, speaking uh, here in uh, social media, of course, with the help of Jello, and thanks for that for reaching out. I think yun lang. Ayon, thank you so much, Sir Chong. 
Sanina Sanika na rin talaga ano. So ay, ayun, so I know you guys medyo over credentials pa lang ng ating speakers, so medyo overwhelming na. So I'm going to stop talking and then I'll let have I'll, I'll let uh Chong do his presentation. So what we are basically going to do is that we're going to go through the presentation that Chong uh did uh, during the Cactus and Succulent Convention last year. And also, he added some slides for resistance management. So uh, I know you all are very excited for that. And then if you have questions, uh, please uh, please make sure you uh, put it on the comment section so that we can hear it. We are going to entertain your questions as we go along with the presentation. Plus, uh, but we just like to encourage that if you are going to ask for questions, make sure that your questions are specific, are, are, I mean, are related uh, or is related to the topic that is currently being discussed. Um, so, for example, if you have a question on um, mealybugs, so we are going to have a segment for mealybugs and, and then put your question in there. Para lang medyo organized tayo kasi... The presentation is 100 slides, <laughs> so <laughs> take, take, take out your notes if you have some. Uh, it's 100 uh, slides, so na, ko, ko almost covered niya everything. Kung meron tayong mga hindi ma-cover doon na ma-question na hindi niyo maipasok, ilalagay natin siya at the end. So, ayun. So, I know you are already so strong. I'll give it to you, sir. Ayan. So whenever, whenever you're ready, sir. Uh, Jilo, kita pa yung mukha ko? Yes. Yes, yes, we can. Can we... Can we... <laughs> We don't, we don't no, vocalize. No, 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 kasi yung monitor ko kasi nasa maliit lang kasi yung cellphone ko. Kailangan kong lumapit sa monitor. I mean, sa ah, screen. Okay, so, okay, most okay. likely, baka, yup, yup. Yeah, sige, so, sige, sige, sorry. Please, thank you. Ay, sorry, wait. One moment. Um, paano ba to? Um... Ian. Sure na wala na. Oh, sure sure na sure na. <laughs> okay. Sige so ah. Oh nga. Hindi, you should see, okay, you should see. be able to see it on your screen. So we are just we we just have the presentation on the screen. Okay, whenever you're ready. So I'm in. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, magandang, yes. Magandang hapon sa lahat. So, uh, basically, yung uh, gagawing presentation natin is more on the general information on how to manage tests and diseases, as well as uh, the general information on the resistant management program that it is not only developed in the Philippines, but globally. So, kasi it's, I, I suggested this to uh, Sir Jello last time that uh, we might include the uh, resistance management because ito yung nakikita kong neglected among growers and enthusiasts. Like along the way, along the slides, we will discuss how the intervention of growers and educators can help us prolong the life shelf of this uh, technology. Kasi, kasi itong, itong mga pesticides na ginagamit natin, it came from a very deep research Ang tinatagal nito, it's aabot ng 5 to 10 years. And for us, we need to prolong its efficacy. So meaning, kailangan natin ingatan ang paggamit nito as well as kung, kung anong gagawin natin in case may madidlop na resistance. So ayun, next slide please. So again, yun nga, yes, you're right. So, gusto ko simulan yung presentation ko as, you know, it's a very, a very a good quote from Lao Cho. It is, I mean, Sancho. It's, it, it says that if you know your enemy, 
me and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. This is same, uh, katulad ng ginagawa natin dito. We need first to learn who are the enemies. And sa pag-aalagin natin ng halaman, the most common enemies that we encountered along the way are... Next slide, please. So, who are the enemies? Most likely, our enemies are the pests. Now, uh, one of the, the, the theory I've learned before in plant pathology, in uh, disease diagnosis, is uh, we must first identify what are our enemies. And these are the pests. Basically, for this one, kasi pag alam natin kung ano yung, yung kala, sino yung kalaban natin, most likely alam natin kung anong gagawin natin sa kanya para mapuksa or you know, to control or manage its existence. Okay, next slide please. So what are pests? Now, based on the description given by Hill, uh, ang pesty daw, it's, it's any animal or plant that can cause you harm damage sa atin, sa halaman, sa mga tao, sa ari-arian natin. At kahit konting annoyance that it can cost you, that is considerable as pest. And this, uh, itong mga pest na to can be categorized based on uh, the structure of the organism. For example, uh, pests are So pests can be insects, mice, birds, rats, slugs, snails, nematodes, weeds, as well as human humans. Yeah, yun. So, but basically for this uh, for this uh, session, we will only tackle on insect pests, um, pathogens, and we will leave the, 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 the human pest in your, in your neighbor. So, siguro dyan natin, you know, uh, faster. Pwede, mm. pwede natin uh, medyo bilis ng slides. Please. Yeah, next slide, please. So, so una muna kasi we have this perception like if we hear insect, parang parang nasasagi sa isip natin na all insects are pests, but but that's not the, the reality. Now, but before that, we will first uh, distinguish what is an insect. So basically, based on its biology, any insects that or any organism that has these characteristics on the slides are considered insects. Now, the the one of the the distinct characteristic of an insect is it has a body region like the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So, may, meron kasing, you know, in some of the groups, like may nakikita tayong like any small bug or small organism na most likely katulad ng insecto. They, they label that as insect, but in reality, they are not. So, most likely, uh, we need to correct that Pero yun nga, mahirap sa social media mag-correct ng tao because baka mabash ka pa. So, I, I you know, I, I, I prefer to not to correct. But I, I hope in this kind of session, at least makakorek natin yung mga maling perception. Okay, next slide please. So, yung tanong ngayon is, paano natin masasabi na isang insecto daw ay considerable as test? Now, based on, again, on the, the description, kung yung insecto na yun can damage your plant or your position or your health or any of your uh, valuable things. For example, in case sa halaman, kung that insect can cause harm to the, any part of the, the, the plant, that is considerable as a pest. And there are also a diverse group of insects that can vector or carries uh, plant diseases. So in case of, uh, in, in sa tao, uh, like mosquito can, can, can vector uh, malaria or yellow or dengue fever. So same as with 
uh, the plants. There are diseases in plants that are vectored by insect pests. Ayun nga, may mga misconception kasi sa most likely of the growers, napapansin ko lang naman to sa mga groups. Pag may nakikita sila o na naririnig na insekto, they consider this uh, insects as pest, which in reality, again, it is not. And based on the the studies conducted by entomologists and biologists, out of the population of the insect species, uh, next slide, please. Ayun, out of the 1.3 million species uh, uh, under animal kingdom, uh, 1 million of that are insects. So that is comprises 75% of the animal kingdom. But only less than 10% of that 1 million species are considered at success. So meaning there are 90% of insect population that can be beneficial or just mere uh, free living. Yep, next slide please. So we have here the, the most uh, or the four major insect pests that can attack our, our, our plants, specifically in cacti and succulents. So these are uh, mealy bags, uh, root, rot, uh, root mealy bags, scale insects, aphids, and of course the, the mutual uh, insect among this uh, insect pests are the ants. Uh, siguro Jilo, uh, Sir Dan can share on their experience in nursery regarding on the this common insect pest before we, we proceed. Hello. Yeah, we can we can hear you, yeah. sir. Hi. Yep. Uh, yeah. yes, very common ito. Uh ito, you can't really control itong millibug problem na ito. You can only manage it. So, babalik at babalik ang milibag infestation. Uh, sa amin, uh, na agricultural area, uh, madaming crops dito like uh, rose, rose farm, uh, madaming mga pests, uh, katulad ng milibags. Isang issue yan dito sa ornamental farming at saka sa vegetable farming. Uh, uh, recurring yan. Tapos lalo na kung uh, namimili ka ng mga plants kahit na sa mga established na farms at saka mga long time na uh, reliable sources ng plants meron at merong milibag uh, problem sila. So pag if you will go into farming uh, magiging issue yan lalo na sa mga soft uh, soft uh, body to vegetable or ornamentals. Uh, tapos, uh, pag sumasali ka sa mga show, or kahit yung back, uh, backyard mo lang, uh, pwedeng pasukan yan ng millibugs. Uh, it's uh, one major issue sa, sa farming and collecting ng succulents. Uh, dito sa Pilipinas at pa uh, pati din sa California, major issues. Ang issue yung Lilibag. Ayan. So, Sir Chong, we'll proceed with your presentation. Thanks, thanks for that, Sir Dan. <laughs> Ayan. Sir Chong, we'll go back to your slide. Yes, yes, please. Uh, next slide, please. So, ayun nga. So, it is very common, uh, especially on greenhouses and, you know, some, uh, some microclimate that, you know, your airflow is not that good. Basically, this is uh, very rampant in uh, indoor plants also. Mm -hmm. So, basically, millibag. Ito nga yun. So, may nilagay lang ako dito medyo technical aspect, but, uh, you know, it can help the, the growers to understand like it is under insecta, uh, hemeptera. This is their group, and 
Oh, okay, hindi na natin siguro tatalakayin yan. So, but most likely, the general characteristic of this uh, insect pet is, is maliliit, maliliit sila. And they have a very soft body covered by this uh, waxy substance, white cottony substance. Kaya tinawag siyang pilibag because of this kind of characteristics. Kasi uh, it has a meal, uh, meal-like structures. So, pag may nakikita kayong puti-puti na medyo cottony structure and soft, most likely that is a bag. And again, observed in some discussion in the groups, kahit kasi may mga, you know, uh, siguro medyo baguhan na na-collector or hobbyist. Uh, kasi uh, may nakita akong nag- nag-post ng isang picture doon sa isang group. And it's, it's pretty obvious that it was a scale insect. But nung tinignan ko yung mga comment is, there's a lot of commenter uh, doon sa, sa thread na they say, oh, it is a scale insect, which is not. So, ayun. So, at is, I think this is a very good information for everybody as well as the visualization on how to identify insect pests. Because identification in uh, insect of insect pests can, you know, give us, especially pag, pag, pag uh, si grower or si, si hobbies, uh, he will call an, an expert or something like that. Tatawag siya na, oh, may napansin ako ditong uh, milibag. And then those uh, specialists will, you know, uh, sasabihin niya, okay, mag-apply ka ng ganito kasi milibag naman niya. Ganun. Pero pag tinignan mo pala yung, yung specimen, it is not a milibag. It is a, a scale insect. That is a, a wrong identification. Can, can also lead to a wrong treatment. So that's how identification is important. So ayun. So kung mapapansin niyo yung katawan ni milibag, it has this uh, segmentation. And that segmentation will have this uh, extension of meals like appendages or filaments type na sa araw na pula. So that is also one of the distinct characteristic of milibag. And this is the most favorite part of the ants. So si milibag kasi nagproproduce ng honeydew. Si honeydew kasi, ito yung kinakain ng mga, ng mga ants. So basically, it will feed the ants. In return, ants will protect the millibag population. So, ano 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 ba kasi yung gustong uh, microclimate ni ni millibag? So mas preferred ni millibag na low light density at saka for yung air circulation. Kaya sabi ko kanina, this is a very common test in greenhouses as well as in uh, any indoor indoor plants. Kasi nga yung, yung airflow is somewhat uh, disrupted because of the, the openings of the, the walls. So again, uh, these uh, insects are polypagos, meaning ang daming pwedeng kainin ng milibag, not only cactuses and indoor plants, but across species under plant kingdom. Kaya niya kahit sa puno, sa mga sa mga bunga ng, ng pinya, ng mangga, anything, anything that can, you know, attract this uh, insect can be uh, a good host for milibag. Di lang sa sa Pilipinas, but across the world, makikita si milibag. So that, this is how, you know, uh, ubiquitous milibag is. Uh, next slide. Uh, ayan. Isang trivia about milibags. Sige, go, go lang. Ayan. Go lang, go lang yeah, sir, Dan. Sa, sa Mexico, pina-farm siya for uh, sa opuntias. Pinapadami siya sa mga opuntia. Tapos, uh, kinokolekta siya to be made as dye. Na parang purple, yes, reddish dye. Yes, ayan, uh, yes tama si sir, Dan. Actually, there is a practice uh, in Latin America farming millibag, but that is a different species. That is the cocainal millibag. Yep. So, yun na, yung reddish na pigment. Yes, yun tama. So, uh, pag pinisa mo kasi yung cocainal na millibag na yun, makikita mo yung pula, like a deep red purple na pigment. Yun yung ginagawang dye. Yep, tama yun. Oo. Uh-huh. Tapos i chong i address lang natin na, tong one one question about milibugs. So from Sir Jonathan, tamad ba ano? sir na may 
Tama ba sir na may instances na ants mismo ang nagta-transfer ng mini bonds? Yes, yep. Uh, as we move along the slide, uh, makikita natin doon yung uh, benefits ni Millibag from ONS and ANTS Millibag. That, that's why we have this mutualistic relationship. Along, along the slides, madi-discuss natin yun. But yes, the, the answer is yes. Okay, moving on. So for the life cycle, again, this is a very important part in uh, you know, management or control of the population because... Uh, most of the pesticide use as well as the integrated pest management use is based on the life cycle of the insects in this case. Now, most likely insect population or life cycle revolve only about one month to three months, but this is dependent on the temperature, meaning um, uh, yung panahon, the life cycle will be shortened. Like for example, yung, yung hypothetical a life cycle ng isang insecto is 30 days, but the temperature rises during the hot, the hot summer days. So the tendency is that the insect will shorten its life cycle for survival. Now, pag malamig naman yung, one, yung microclimate, there is this phenomena on insect that we call diatose, meaning it will prolong its life stages. So instead na one month, they will try to uh, what do you call this? Yung parang the, the metabolism that takes place inside the system of insect. Pinapa, pinapahinan nila. I don't know the term. But yun. So they will prolong the life cycle again for them to survive. Now, there are the optimum temperature requirement for each insect species. Now, based on the mini bag, yung gustong gusto niya talaga. Prefer lang the preferred meaning it can be uh, not the optimum growth, but prefer. Like, they can withstand on this type of temperature. So, most likely 28 to 38 degrees centigrade. And mini bugs are called sexually dimorphic, meaning di means to, morphosis means change. Meaning, yung babaing mini bug at saka yung lalaking mini bug na adults are very different from each other. Now, most Lahat ng nakikita natin sa field or in our, uh, yeah, sa field or sa ating uh, greenhouses are the adult female millibag. Kasi yung, yung babaeng millibag is immobile, meaning once it can establish the feeding system or the feeding site on that certain plant, di na siya aalis doon, at least kung kukunin mo talaga siya. Pero yung lalaki, kung magtitignan nyo yung lalaki, yung lalaki naman is siya yung merong characteristics na very, uh, what do you call that? Parang very common ang in-six species. Kung titignan mo yun, may pakpak, may antena, may three-body region, may, may anim na pa. So meaning, yung, this is also a good indication when kailangan natin na kung, alo, kung anong gusto natin control measure. Right? For example, uh, di naman mabubuntis yung babaeng millibag kung walang lalaki. So most likely, if we can control the, female, the, the males, so of course, reproduction will, will not succeed. But the good thing about the, the, the female millibag is nagpuproduce sila ng pheromone. Pheromone is the sixth hormone of uh, most of the animal species under animal kingdom. Now, pag nag-release nag ng pheromone si, si babaeng millibag, automatically ma-attract si, si lalaking millibag. And that's the time they will demate. And again, that is the, the time that they will increase their population in a certain generation. So the metamorphosis of millibag is incomplete, meaning kung titignan mo yung itlog hanggang sa mga mga batang millibag is uh, very similar in appearance. Unlike uh, some insect species like the butterfly, they have the egg, larva, pupa, and adult. That is the complete metamorphosis. So, ayun. Next slide, please. Now, the, the second one is on the, the root millibag. So, kung, kung medyo maliit si the common millibag, mas maliit tong si root millibag. So it's most likely uh, underground 
uh, insect population can be can be seen once ma magrarap na yung upper portion ng dahon. So again, it has a very similar characteristics with the common minibug. Dito lang nga sa root minibug is doon sila namamay sa, sa ilalim ng ugat or on the the root zone of the plant. Again, they also have this uh, characteristic in producing honeydew. And again, they can also infest diverse group of plants. Next slide, please. So, parehas lang din yung life cycle ni, ni root millibag from, from the common millibag. Uh, same characteristic ng adult, ng itlog, ng environment na uh, as the millibag. Next slide, please. Now, the next one is on the armored scale insect. Na, pero yung nakikita natin sa mga thread or sa, sa comment ng, ng groups is we only use a scale, scale insect, but the, the, the appropriate one is a armored scale insect. Kasi si, si Millibag also is considered as scale insect, but the, the soft uh, version, the soft bad scale insect. So si scale insect na nakikita natin in the picture is the armored scale insect. So again, kung, kung titignan nyo lang si scale insect is again immobile siya. Like di siya nagalaw. Di siya nagalaw parang pag nakita na ni scale insect yung magandang feeding site, it will, it will just feed on that uh, site and ayun, di na siya alis. Nakikita natin kasi sa, sa, sa scale insect is only the covering. Hindi siya mismo yung insecto. So yung kulang insecto nito is naandun mismo sa loob ng scale o ng armor. Unlike uh, millibags, si scale insect, di siya nagtuproduce ng honeydew. But again, the crop, but it also prefers a low density of light. And again, it's also a polypagos. Now, on its uh, life cycle, again, it's also a, a sexual dimorphic insect. So, yung babae at lalaki magkaibang magkaiba. And, yeah, the bad news is, di kailangan ni scale insect ng lalaki para mabuntis. Because they are sexually Produ I mean, they are producing in partinogenesis, meaning yung babaeng scale insect, pwede siyang magbuntis without the fertilization or the process of, you know, uh, meeting the sperm of the egg. So that is the bad news for us. And again, most likely, gustong gusto rin ni, ni scale insect ng stagnant airflow at saka it's... Uh, most likely yung preferable environment yeah, is like talagang in the tropics. And again, it's, it's metamorphosis is incomplete. Yes, next slide, please. Yeah, I think this is the last one uh, on the uh, aphids. Now, aphids, bag scale insect are of the same group. Diba yung nabagit ko kanina, like, they are insecta and their group is on hemeptera. Meaning, they all, they shared the same characteristics. And as we go along the slides, malalaman natin kung anong characteristics na they, they shared uh, similar. So, medyo maliit itong mga aphids na to. And depends on the species. It varies in the color, like, green, dark, brown, white, brown, orange, pinkish, reddish. Again, they will produce... Uh, honeydew and they are mostly attacking on the apical growth of the plants meaning yung mga bagong sibol na dahon yung mga buds or yung uh, growing point ng halaman mas preferred nilang uh, umatake doon because that is the most succulent part of the plant and you know yung nutrient at saka yung yung enzymes na sa loob ng apical growth is very rich that requires there to develop and again, they are polypagos. Now, on 
the cycle of this uh, insects. Uh, this is the millibug, I mean, aphids are not sexually dimorphic, meaning kung titignan nyo si babae tsaka si lalaki, parehang parehas lang yung mukha. But generally, in insect population, uh, yung mga babae talaga is mas malalaki compared sa mga lalaki. The reason why is, uh, yung mga babae kasi yung nagdadala ng itlog, and their function really is to reproduce. So, kailangan nila ng malaking abdomen o yung katawan to have carried more eggs than expected. So again, the life cycle is very short, only one month. And yes, this is also a good uh, characteristic of, of aphids in their part. Yeah. Kasi yung aphids, kasi pag meron pa yung pagkain, andun lang sila. They are wingless. But pag madetect na ng population, especially the alpha uh, aphids, oh, I think pag may scarcity na ng pagkain, uh, they have this tendency, then tendency to develop wings, and the main the main purpose is for migration. Kaya there are times na mapapansin natin na oh may may aphids last time dito, and then after a month or so na wala lumipat sa kabila. That's the reason why. Uh, it's most likely na mas prefer nilang kainin yung kabilang halaman versus to the other. Or, nag-apply ka ng chemicals doon sa part na din lumipat sila. So, basically, this is the, 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 the wing formation is basically on survival of the insect species. And yes, uh, they also prefer the tropical uh, microclimate, which is uh, very common here in the Philippines, especially in greenhouses and indoor plots. Yeah, next slide, please. So, yung tanong naman ngayon is, paano ba umaatake o, nagka, o, o paano ba yung mga insectong to is cost uh, damage to our succulents and cacti? Sinabi ko kanina, they shared a very similar characteristics and here it is they are having this kind of mouth, part, mouth parts like pursing sucking mouth parts. Kaya, kaya under sila sa Hemeptera group or order, order Hemeptera because they have this sucking mouth parts. So lahat ng insecto na belong sa Hemeptera or order Hemeptera is having this type of insect mouth parts. So meaning, meron silang parang syringe o yung yung syringe na ginagamit ng in, in medical purposes. So imagine a needle. Yung needle is hollow inside. So yung, yung mouth part ng aphids, millibag, at saka ng, ng armored scale insect is pursing sucking, meaning yung needle-like feeding part yun is tutusok-tusok yun. And then pag tutusok-tusok yun, maybe next slide please. Ito. So this is the up close uh, sucking, pursing sucking mouth type of uh, scaly insect, aphids, and millibag. So, so anong nangyayari ba? Anong nangyayari pag during feeding, excuse me, during feeding, tutusok-tusok yung mouth parts ni Sam on the plants. Next slide please. Uh, next slide, please. So, but before that, so, saan ba kasi yung feeding site? So, gusto ko lang makita to uh, in, you know, educational purposes kasi para maintindihan natin yung nangyayari within the plant. Kasi parang, I know, ako kasi yung tipo na ayaw ko lang, ayaw ko lang malaman kung ay, ito ay namatay dahil sa minibag. So, yung, gusto, kong, gusto kong iparating dito is ano yung nangyayari within the plant and how the plant interacts with the insect during feeding time. So yung, yung plant, kasi we have these vascular bundles or vascular cells. So it's mainly like xylem and phloem. Like the xylem, will, this is the, the vessels that transport the water and the minerals. And the phloem is basically transporting food for the leaves. Ito, it, Kung titignan yung larawan na to, ito, ito yung under microscopy, like, you know, very drawing lang to, but it's very informative, like, 
pag na-disrupt kasi itong flow ng silent at saka ng fluven, apiktado kasi yung function ng hal natin. So yung nakikita kasi natin na symptoms, symptoms na oh, nalanta lang bigla yung cactus ko, nalanta yung succulent ko, ganito, ganyan. That is just the secondary symptoms. So gusto ko, gusto ko kayong dalhin doon sa pinaka, pinaka uh, root cause ng pagtalanta ng halaman, for example. Okay, next slide please. Depending on the type of the plants, it's either dicot or monocot. Ito yung arrangement ng vascular bundle sa halaman. So most likely, pag, uh, like the flapjacks are the, the monocot one, and most of the succulents are on the dicot one. So ito yung arrangement ng xylem at saka ng fluem. Ito yung hinahanap na gustong tusokin ng samo, scale insect, aphids, and mini bag. Okay, next slide please. So this is just a representation. Now, di ba sinabi na rin kanina na pag nakita ni insecto yung magandang feeding site doon sa halaman, it will stay and feed. Pero but, but before that, maghahanap si Sam ng magandang site kung saan niya sisipin yung, you know, the flow and the silent. Pag yung, yung mechanism ni insecto is Tusok, 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 tusok. Kasi maghahanap na siya ng magandang site. Eh. Now, pag tinusok, tusok mo yung part ng halaman, of course, the cell, the tissues of the plant will be damaged. So that is uh, one of the, 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 the effect. Now, pag na-chempohan ni Sam o ng insecto, yung, uh, yun nga, yung phloem at saka yung xylem, then it will feed on that certain part of the plant. Kasi pursing sa akin siya, tutusok siya, purse, pag nakita na naman yung flowing at saka ng xylem, then it will suck up all the nutrients from that sets. And that is the reason why, but nagda-dry up at saka nalalanta yung mga dako natin. So at least on that level, alam natin ba't nalalanta siya? Not merely, oh, because of that, because of the, infest the infestation of these certain insects. Huwag tayong, you know, at least we can go deeper on that uh, reason. Okay, next slide, please. So it's a feeding frenzy. So this is now the secondary symptoms na makikita natin when uh, this uh, infestation happening in the pump. Diba, uh, una, it, we will, will find this uh, localized discoloration of the feeding site. Kasi di ba sabi natin ngayon na tusok, 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 tusok. That will damage the cell and the tissue inside. Pag na-damage yung cell at saka yung tissue of the plant, of course, you will manifest it, uh, chlorotic symptoms. Kaya may discoloration on the feeding site. And as we go along, pag, pag dumami na nga yung population ni, ni Milibag, mapapansin natin na medyo kumukulubot na yung o nagsishrink na yung uh, part ng halaman which, which the feeding site. Kasi nga, kinuha o uh, sinipsip na lahat ng nutrient inside. And the worst case is makikita natin nga on the last picture is makikita natin na dry yung leaves. Tsaka slowly namamatay na yung halaman natin. So that is the, the, the effects of the uh, feeding frenzy of millibag in the plants. When left unchecked. Next slide, please. Now, I, I stressed this out last time, last year, that may mga napapansin tayong uh, certain variety or species of cacti and succulents that kahit may millibag pa, buhay pa rin. So, the indication of that type of cultivar or species is it maybe carries a resistant gene that can combat the infestation of the insects, which is in, in genetics or in, uh, in, breeding, in breeding part, that can be a good candidate for breeding purposes. Like, kung gusto natin magbreed ng, because in the Philippines, as I, I observe, yung breeding purpose natin is more aesthetic value, yung, yung maganda lang yung halaman for breeding purpose. But on this, you know, on this picture, we can, you know, create 
study or experiment on breeding for insect resistance or breeding for disease resistance like you know we what we did in uh, in rice and corn for that matter so i want to stress out to stress this out kasi nakikita natin buhay pa rin yung alamal eh uh, despite sa infestation ng ng gibag so but most likely the vigor and the aesthetic value of the plant are disrupted as well as affected by the feeding frenzy of this kind of insect pest. Makikita natin undernourished and underdeveloped but still buhay siya. So there's something there's something uh, deep within its DNA that you know can say that I can I can combat or I can uh, tolerate this kind of infestation. Yep, next slide please. Now, for scale, again, it's most quietly similar to, to the feeding frenzy insect. Makikita natin, again, uh, discoloration on the feeding side. And it will localize, drying up, localized, I mean, localized drying up of the, the part, the plant tissues. And in the worst is uh, it can cause defoliation, especially on those uh, succulent that has this uh, foliage, like um, the Euphorbia melii or some uh, Echeveria species. Yeah, next slide, please. Now, on the aphids, as mentioned earlier, nakikita natin sila doon umatake at the growing point of the plant. Kaya because of the the succulent part is has most you know a nutritious uh, enzymes or food that that that, that the aphids needs for development. So we can see there's underdeveloped uh, or abnormal growth of the tissues, and we can see that it's stunted the growth of the succulent because it's disrupted na yung, uh, yung growth ng, ng halaman. And most likely, it's the overall health and aesthetic value of the plants are affected. So, kung pangit yung alaman, the value or di na di siya ganun ka kaganda, of course. And also, a uh, mini bug also plays a very important role in vectoring diseases, not only in succulents and cacti, but also on the agronomic uh, crops in the in the field. So, like we really face a, a big challenge in tomato, potato and another high value crops with this uh, kind of insect pests. Yeah, next slide, please. Now, to, to address the question last time, now we have here a, a very good mutual relationship between ants and some of these, uh, especially aphids and mealybag. Now, in general, ant farm aphids and mealybags because of the honeydew they produce that served for the ants as food. Now, in turn, yung makukuha naman ni aphids at saka ni millibags is they are protected against the predator of millibag and aphids. And in, in some cases, yung maliliit na tinatawag natin crawler or yung baby millibag and baby aphids can ride for free for transfer to another plant to another. So the, the, the question earlier is, you know, that is uh, relevant sa pwede yun. So, mapapansin kasi natin, like, ants have this uh, tray hormone, yung parang daanan nila. And I observed that uh, in one of the greenhouses here sa, sa, sa research station namin. Uh, when we have, we conducted a trial rise, we have very, you know, we have a problem in the industry of uh, millibags. So, yung ginawa namin, we did not control actually the millibag itself. Yung ginawa namin is we control the colony of the ants. So, we put some, you know, uh, synthetic pesticide to kill the, the, the colony of the ants para mas madali namin poksain yung, yung infestation ng, ng, ng millibag. So, that's also a, a one approach kung gusto nyo. But, yeah, along the way, we will discuss some, you know, integrated pest management for them. So just a recap. So the four 
major insect pests attacking succulents and cacti are mealybags, root and recall bag, then the armored scaly insect, then the aphids, and its mutual relationship with ants. Yeah, good. So, yeah. So, di ba sinabi natin kanina in the, the population of insect pests comprising about 1 million and only less than 10% are insect pests and there are 90% or more than 90% are beneficial or free living. Now, here are some of the beneficial insects that be a grower's friend. So, basically, these are coccinellid beetles. So, yung ginagawa ni coccinellid kasi is this is a very voracious feeder on aphids and millivags. And kahit yung batang, uh, mi, batang lady beetles can consume to based on, you know, most based on studies we, we have before, uh, it can consume to five millivag per day. In a one, uh, again, it depends on the species of the, the lady beetles that you, you, you are present in your garden, but based on laboratory test or laboratory experiment that this, uh, these beetles are really voracious in terms of uh, millibags and aphids. So I think uh, kung merong uh, masishare si Sir Dan for, for insect pests before we can move along the plant diseases, Jilo? Mm. Uh... I have some samples here ng mga interested mamaya ng actual na ginagamit namin against these insect pests. Mga uh, pwedeng gamitin ng mga home uh, uh, collectors in, in their homes na nabibili online na products na safe gamitin uh, very, and very practical na mga mga pang-manage sa pest na to. Uh, hindi lang siya, uh, hindi siya chemical-based or synthetic. Uh, I will show you after Sir Chong's uh, uh, slides. Uh, ano pa ba? Okay, so yeah. if, if, you have, if you have a question, guys, uh, feel free to uh, put it in the comment section and then we'll, we'll take it up. Um, have one like pacing si Sir Chong. Mm -hmm. Tapos yung isa pang uh, other secondary na problems ng mga insect na to, as Sir Chong mentioned, they produce honeydew. And this honeydew, pag nahuhulog siya sa dahon ng halaman, katulad ng agave or echeverias, uh, may iniiwan siyang uh, high amounts of sugar. Itong sugar na to, yung honeydew na excreted from these insects, uh, a moldy uh, fungi called the sooty mold, commonly co called sooty mold, grows on these sugars. So nagiging parang, yes, um, parang mga amag na black, you know, parang usok na nagbibuild up on the leaf surface which eventually reduces the capabili capability of the leaf to produce uh, food for the plant. So natatakpan yung leaf surface ng, ng moldy, na hindi naman siya pathogenic, ibig sabihin yung, yung fungus na to hindi kumakain ng plant or nag-feed on the plant, but they're on, feeding on the sugars uh, excreted by these insects. So na pumapangit, bumababa yung, yung uh, beauty ng halaman because of these stains brought about by these uh, insects. So yun yung secondary na negative na effect ng insects na to. Uh, mamaya, I can show you the photos uh, na ipapakita ni Sir Jello. Mm -hmm. Ayun. So, um, since we don't have any um, questions so far uh, for, for this one, uh, we are going to move forward. I think our next slides are going to be plant pathogens. Um, 
So, Sir Chong, you're yes, ready? Ready when you are? Yep. Nagbe-break ba yung audio ko? Um, hindi naman. Sa akin, ha? Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay naman. So, and we're... Yeah. And we're back. So, yeah. so, so guys, also, we are... Yes. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Slide 58, almost half na tayo, ha? So... <laughs> Um, madali na lang to. Uh, but <laughs> take your time, Strong. I think I think kaya walang mga questions so far is because focus na focus pa sila. <laughs> Sa pakikinig sa'yo. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> There. Oh, magtanong lang kayo Hindi, pag medyo sila. complicated. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Or kailangan explain further. Okay. Okay, sige, sige. Thank you. So, okay. ayun. So, we're done with the insect pests. So, we will move along with uh, pathogens or plant pathogens. So, these are uh, plant pathogens by default are... Hola. Ayan. Sir so Chong, you're back. Can you hear us? Chong? Nag, nawalan ng signal siguro. Uh, Sir Chong, uh, are you here? Are you there? Hello? Hey, Ayan, we can hear you. We can, we can hear you. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, uh, we will discuss more on the disease triangle at the disease cycle. So I will just try to explain uh, very in layman's term para you know, masabayan nyo ako. So next slide please. Medyo nagka-crash kasi sa, sa akin dito yung screen. Ayan. So the disease triangles, you know, these are the interrelated factors that can lead to the development of the disease. Now, this is the very basic approach, not only in plant pathology, but, you know, in medical uh, profession also, like the plant doctors. Yep. Now, the disease triangle has, you know, three factors, the interrelated factors for us to have a disease. Now, one factor is the pathogen. Now, pathogen or the disease-causing microorganisms must be virulent. Virulent meaning yeah. capable of infection. Not only virulent, but aggressive. Aggressive meaning yeah. ilang araw na i-infect yung halaman to produce a disease. So not only na kaya lang niya mag but how, how fast? How fast does this a pathogen can infect? In fact, the, the, the plant. And the next factor is the, the, host, the host plant itself. Next slide, please. Now, the host plant or the cacti, succulent, or any plant must be susceptible, meaning easily infected by the pathogen. And the last factor is the environment. So the environment must be favorable to a particular disease, meaning uh, right temperature, right humidity, right sunshine, anything that considered as uh, favorable to the growth of the pathogen and the plants. Now, these three factors must be present and should be interacting with each other para may sakit na ma-develop. Now, the absence of one of these factors will not lead to any plant diseases. Now, now for that three factors, yung, kasi yung, yung setup natin, uh, growing cacti and succulents and indoor plants is you know, most likely we can alter the microclimate of this, you know, in the disease triangle uh, on the previous slide, Jello, please. So we cannot control the pathogen 
we cannot control the genetics of the, the host plant or the sacapta and succulent, but most likely in the disease triangle, based on the current practice of most hobbyists and nurseries are, we can alter or even control the environment. Now, for that matter, sabi na, sabi na natin kanina, these three factors must be inter, interacting with each other para may sakit na mabuo. Now, if we can alter the environment or the microclimate of our set up greenhouses or what, whatsoever, there are tendency that we can control the development of the diseases in our, you know, cacti and succulents or plants. So what I'm trying to say is, if we will give the, if we will not give the 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 favorable environment or condition for the insect pests and the diseases, there are a big chance that di na tayo apply ng you know pesticides or any 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 control measure because in nga sabi nga natin kaya we can modify the environment based on our current setup. So there are you know high tech greenhouses that you know they will set those temperature humidity to control this type of uh, insect i mean diseases in some dinar suits but yeah yeah next slide please so uh, for this uh, session i just try to you know categorize two major pathogens that attacks succulent these are the most common uh, uh minis in a growing cacti and succulents one are one is the, the fungal pathogens, or these are the, the fungi that can cause hard rots on plants. And the second pathogen group is the bacterial pathogens, or these are the, the bacterium causing sufrat of most of the plants. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, so these are the the fungal rot pathogens. These are the most common pathogens found in greenhouses. Kung mapapansin nyo, may mga succulents tayo na nakikita na very dry pero patay. Blackened, shrink, rosettes, or stem. Because that are caused by fungal pathogens. Hard rot causing fungal pathogens. Patay siya, pero very dry. It, it will not grow. Unlike, so, so, so I, I gave some, you know, a specific uh, fungi here, the macrophina. So, yung makikita natin ng itim-itim na namatay na succulent, na, yun nga, uh, very dry and blackened. That is charcoal rot. Charcoal rot. Yun nga, charcoal kasing maitim. And uh, this fungi na nakalista dito, yung apat na species, Kung titignan niyo siya sa, sa, sa laboratorio, yung growth ng, ng fungi sa petri dish o in the media o in the microscope, these are dark, dark colored fungi. So these are the one that causing charcoal rot on our uh, succulents and, and, and cacti. Now on the, on the right side, these are caused by Fusarium sporum. This is a very serious fungal pathogen, not only in succulents, but across the crops. Kahit kahoy, kaya niyang irat with this type of pathogen, the fusarium nut. Well, in this case, fusarium pathogens are white in color. So makita niyo dito sa, 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 sa nabulok na, na halaman is may makikita tayong puti-puting mycelia. This is the uh, growth structure of the, fun, of the fungi. So basically, pag, pag itim yung nakikita nating rot that is caused by charcoal rot pathogens, at pag may puti-puti naman, that is a fusarium. But still, they fall under same category, the fungal rot pathogens. So at least we can differentiate, at least pag nakita natin sa alaman natin, oh, this is a, a fungal, uh, fungal rot pathogen that can cause, nangingitim siya. And then if we can see white a formation of mycelia or yung para siyang cottony structure ng fungus or para siyang root structure ng fungus that will, you know, eventually suck up all the nutrients in the plant. So these are the fungal rat pathogens. So, so, 
So we'll keep in mind pag hard rot that is caused by fungi. Now in that case, we will apply fungicide. We will not apply bactericide kasi nga fungi siya. So next, yeah, next slide please. So yung tanong dito, paano nangyari yun? Like in a blink of an eye, nakikita, nakikita, nakikita na lang natin sa, sa mga halaman natin that bigla-bigla na lang nangingitim. But eventually, there, there is what we call a disease cycle. So ito yung proseso but nagkakaroon ng sakit yung halaman natin. Again, based on the disease triangle na binigay natin yung tatlong factor na nag-interacting -inter with each other. Uh, given that the uh, the environment is favorable, the, the host or the plant is susceptible, and the pathogen is very virulent and aggressive. Now, halimbawa, may nakita tayong isang uh, nag-rat, nag-dry rat na, na succulent. And most of the growers or the enthusiasts, yung ginagila, hinahawakan pa kasi nila yun. Like, hinahawakan, like, talang chinicheck, like, you know, fungal spores are dispersed by wind, insects, and most likely by humans. So, uh, so uh, anong nangyayari doon? Like, under the microscopy, kung titignan nyo itong disease tissue ng halaman, ito yung makikita nyo. This is a, a fungal structure. In this case, this is a pyritisia. No, para, para tong Para itong, para itong isang cup or sabihin nila natin hypothetically, parang isang baso na may takip, yung loob ng baso na yun is yung mga buto o seeds ng, ng, o spores ng, ng pathogen. Now, pag hinog na yun, it will open and it will release the spores. So sabi nga dito, yung dispersal ng spores can be caused by the wind, insects, and human. Pag dumapo yung spores sa susceptible na halaman o yung halaman na very weak kasi nga nilagyan mo ng maraming tubig so naging weak na yung, yung succulent that's the tendency that the, the pathogen can easily infect a plant kasi nga uh, di na siya healthy eh, kasi nga na overwater na and through time pag favorable yung environment kasi nga meron na tayong aggressive pathogen meron na tayong uh, weak na plant, pag binigyan mo pa ng favorable environment yung halaman at saka yung pathogen, that is the perfect combination to have a disease. And as true time, kasi sinabi nga natin aggressive yung pathogen, meaning at a small span of time, it will develop again the symptoms that we observed before. So it's a disease cycle. Yung nagkasakit na naman ang halaman na yun, it will again be the source of the fungal spores that again, it will be dispersed again to the under uh, growing plant in the area. It will, you know, germinate the spores and infect the plant. So, cycle lang siya. So, I hope nakuha yun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, next slide please. Oh, oh grabe, grabe ba? Sorry, interject lang natin yun. No? So, for, for example, sobrang important talaga, especially for plant pathogens, to always sanitize your hands when touching your plants. No? Kasi kapag ka meron kang problematic plant... Jelo, medyo, medyo, uh, nagbe-break jelo. Okay Hello, lang. Hello, jelo, nagbe-break. Okay lang. Baka okay. on your side, sir. So, oh, baka nagbe-break on Sir Chong's side. Pero okay. yun, yung ano, yung... <laughs> Nakalimutan ko tuloy. <laughs> yung sa spore disposal. So kapag ka, ano pala, kapag ka, kapag ka ganun pala, um, so dapat malinis yung kamay mo palagi. Kasi pag hinandle mo yung plant mo na may sakit, you'll never know kung may spore kang bit-bit and then you'll touch your other plants. Yung katulad ng condition natin ngayon na sa pandemic, uh, applicable din sa halaman. Ang isang natutunan ko uh, during my training, uh, very important ang sanitation. Uh, merong, <laughs> <Sabihin ko sana. laughs> uh, yeah, merong farm, 
sa Israel na nagkakaroon sila palagi ng problem kahit na maayos yung sistema nila to prevent rats on their post-harvest uh, vegetables. Ang isang naging dahilan nung pumunta yung uh, epidemiologist or the plant pato- pathologist na expert, nakita niya na yung dump site nila ng, ng disease uh, plants ay nasa tabi ng kanilang bodega. So yung wind, uh, dinidisperse yung fungal spores into the processed uh, post-harvest na vegetables. So importante uh, na linisin yung mga decaying matter or infected plants and keep them away from the from the, your collection. So keep uh, those infected plants away. Tapos, uh, mm, uh, so very microscopic sila, pwedeng ihangin lang from very far away. Kaya uh, maganda din na, na lagyan ng barrier like uh, uh, mga foliage around your area. The, it will also reduce yung yung pagpasok ng mga fungal spores. Yeah. Okay. So parang ano yun? Parang ang, ang mangyayari sa atin eh <laughs> para protektahan mo yung cactus and succulents mo, will gagay ka ng ibang plant. Mm-hmm. Tapos yung isa pa, <laughs> yung lalo na pag you're inviting guests, tapos pag farm ka, uh, mas maganda ding meron kang foot bath. So bago pumasok, kailangan ko din dito sa nursery bago pumasok yung mga farmers or mga collectors, pwede nilang na dala yung fungal spores or pathogens. Aapak muna sila sa parang rag with uh, Clorox to disinfect yung yung mga paa nila para hindi maipasok din yung disease. Nako, ayan. So advice din yan for <laughs> advanced din yan for ano ah for for mga indoor uh, plant hobbyists oh, so, at saka sa mga that, growers din farmers uh, natin mm-hmm. so cleanliness is next to cleanliness <laughs> and good and plants also, <laughs> and gusto ko lang ding i-add uh, actually uh, based on you know, clean, I mean, laboratory study it it requires 1 million nuts, 1 million of uh, reproductive spores to infect a plant. So that you know is a, a standard protocol that we do, we we followed not only in the Philippines but the global uh, protocol. When we induce you know disease during experiment, we really need to count uh, 1 times 10 to the 6 power meaning it contains the suspension and this is to ana uh, ito yung ginagawa namin experiment to to induce a disease. Halimbawa, eh, gusto, namin, gusto namin gumawa na experiment na to, to test a certain technology that can, you know, combat fungal pathogens. Kasi baka yung mindset ng, ng na nanonood sa atin baka magpanik. No? It requires 1 million productive spores to cause a disease. So that is the standard protocol we followed when we induce exp- uh, when we induce ex- uh, diseases in the experiment. So that is for experiment purposes lang. So, kaya mapapansin natin, like for example, ba- newbie ako, like uh, bago akong enthusiast, like I collect more succulents, I collect more succulents. For the past, uh, for more than two years, wala pa akong, wala pa akong nakikitang uh, fungal rat. Then as time goes by, May mga nakikita na akong, uh, you know, infected plants. Uh, because pag di present yung fungal pathogen at, at a very low population level, it is not capable of infecting the plants. So kailangan niyang munang to increase its population by producing uh, uh, productive spores during its uh, life cycle. So kaya ang ginagawa na natin nito is most likely, yung nangyayari is may mga instances na o ba't ako ba, newbie ako, bago akong collector, pero at, at six months may namatayan ako. The, the possible answer could be 
yung supply mo mismo is a very long, I mean, matagal na siyang nag-cactus and succulents, meaning naka-establish na yung population ng pathogens sa farm. And here comes the shipment, sinip mo siya doon sa a very you know, new environment of the pathogen. So yung pathogen mismo requires a lot of time to, you know, to acclimate o yung parang uh, titignan nyo muna yung, uh, environment, yung environment kung pwede pa siyang mag-grow or not. So, ayun lang. Tama yung sinabi kayo ni Sir Dan, like most of the microbes or microorganisms can be killed by 10% hypochlorite acid or Clorox in that, in that manner. So yan, pwede yun. Pwede yung gawing food bag, pwede yung pang disinfect sa mga scissors, sa mga mm-hmm. pots, sa mga clippers, or any plant material and any yung, uh, equipment or apparatus na ginagamit natin. Other sources na pathogens ay mga fruit and vegetables na mga nabubulok. So keep them away also. Kasi yung ibang uh, diseases ay similar sa umaatake sa vegetables and on your succulents. So yung mga nabubulok na kamatis, pwedeng sources yun ng uh, fungal spores or bacterial, uh, pathogenic bacterial cells. Ah, okay. So, uh, Sir Chong and Sir Dan, meron lang tayong question dito from Liza Marquez. I think uh, medyo um, r- related naman ito sa current discussion natin. So, ang question niya, Sir, mga sakit po ba it varies yeah. din yeah. sa plant? Yeah. Ayun. So, Sir Chong, anong sagot mo dyan? So, ayun. <laughs> ayun. Sir Chong, can, can you see the question? Kasi ngayon, uh, it's, it boils down under the genetic makeup of the plant. So, uh, species within species or uh, outside species, the 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 DNA of the plant to plant is not similar. Ah, okay. Okay. Ayun. Okay, so shall we proceed? Uh Chong, Sir Chong. <laughs> baka pinapanood baka pinapanood ni Sir Chong yung Ah, ano. yan. Hindi ko masyad <laughs> magets yun, itong eh. question. Ang po oh, para Hello? may host host specificity minsan yung disease. Oh. Hello Sir Chong. Eh, mukhang, mukhang may delay tayo, Sir Sir Dan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so kasi so yun. So I think the answer na yun ni, ni Sir Chong eh. So it really depends on the host plant. So it doesn't necessarily mean naman kasi yun nga uh, there are three factors that would affect yung yung pathogen kung ano siya kung bago siya ma-develop yep. o bago siya maka-infect ng disease. Going oh, going back to the disease triangle uh, kung mapapansin niyo uh, yung diseases mas prevalent sa Manila compared dito sa Benguet. Sasabihin, um, so ma-observe natin commonly na uh, lesser yung diseases ng mga succulents sa Benguet. That's due to the environmental conditions. So dito sa Benguet, uh, lower yung temperature, less active yung disease compared sa Manila na mainit. And uh, nandun din, pumapasok yung susceptibility ng plants dahil dun sa stresses. Pag binyahi yung halaman, humihina yung halaman due to the changes in climate. So dun din na-observe yung uh, disease triangle. Plus, yung mga disease, uh, yung mga plants from California, from Mexico, na pumapasok dito sa Pilipinas, wala silang resistance sa sa mga pathogens dito kasi meron meron tayong tinatawag na sa plant pathology na gene for gene theory. 
So, yung habang nagiging mas uh, yung plant, kung may disease or uh, pathogen, nagbibuild up ng uh, resistance yung halaman. Uh, tapos yung disease din, nagbibuild up ng uh, virulence. Uh, so, nag adjust sila against each other. So, yung cactus, since wala silang exposure sa mga pathogens previously, talagang given na cactus and succulents ay mostly susceptible sa mga diseases dito sa, na present dito sa Pilipinas. So, yun yung isang main, um, major factor na parang given na na madami sa mga alaga natin ay walang resistance sa mga diseases na present dito sa Pilipinas. Nandiyan na si Sir Chong. Ayan. So, Sir Chong, we can proceed? Yes, hello. Yeah. We can proceed? Yes. Okay. Yeah, next slide, please. And so, we move along to the, the bacterial pathogen or the, the soft rat disease causing bacterium and the very common bacteria that causes this, not only in cacti and succulent, but most of the high-valued crops, tomato, uh, potato, is the Erwinia caratobora. So this is the very distinct soft rot pathogen that we encounter along. So mapapansin natin yung mga cactus natin and succulents is nalulusaw na lang bigla, di ba? So because it is a uh, soft rot pathogen causing the pagkalusaw, Ah, uh, paano ko ba to explain? Kasi yung yung mechanism kasi ng isang bacterial cell, to. I-imagine niyo na lang yung isang uh, yung pader o yung wall na hollow blocks, yung made from hollow block wall. Yung isang hollow block is that is the the cell of the plant. At saka yung yung semento na nakapaligid sa hollow block para mapagdikit-dikit natin yung mga hollow blocks is that is the what we call pitin so pitin so yung yung semento na yon na humahawak ng hollow block para mabuo yung isang wall that is a very important uh, part para yun nga gumawa ng isang wall now in case sa halaman yung yung hollow block at saka yung semento na dumidikit sa hollow block yun yung tinitira o yun yung inaatake ng bacterial cell. Hindi siya, di niya mismo, di niya inaatake yung plant cell itself, but the pitin that binds the cell. Kasi yung mga bacteria is, they have this uh, pitinase. Now, pitinase can degrade pitin. No, yung enzyme, yeah, that's correct, the enzyme that holds the plant cell. Now, pag dinigrade ni bacteria yung semento na humahawak ng mga cells, magko-collapse si, si plant cell. Kaya nakikita natin na natutunaw yung o nabubulok yung halaman natin because there will be no uh, force that will hold the cells intact. Kasi nga, parang nilulusaw ni, bak- ni pectinase ni bacteria yung semento na nakakapit sa mga cells. Kaya nalulusaw siya. Yung mechanism naman ni fungi, it is different from bacteria. Kasi sabi natin yung, yung inaatake ni bacterial uh, pathogen is yung semento na kumakapit sa mga plant cell. Si fungal, fungal pathogen naman, yung inaatake niya is mismo yung cell. Kaya pag sinipsip na ni fungi yung plant cell, it will shrink. Hindi, hindi sa malulusaw, it will just shrink kasi nga wala na, wala na yung, yung nutrients na sa cell. Unlike dito kay bacterial cell, nilulusaw niya yung semento nga. Kaya that is one of the characteristic na dapat nating tignan sa, sa mga tao nito sa mga uh, halaman natin. Now, the question is, pag nalusaw ba yung cacti or succulent natin, nag-a-apply ba tayo ng bactericide? 
The most common malpractice in the groups are reapplied fungicide. And to tell you, that is a very wrong move. Kasi nga, fungicide are designed for fungi, while bactericide are designed for bacteria. Like antibiotics cannot, you know, cure uh, flu caused by viruses. Same as with diseases. So kasi sa mga fora or forum or in the thread or group shots, nalulusa yung cactus ko. Tapos may isang nag-comment, mag-apply ka ng ganitong fungicide. It's a waste of money and it, you know, it's a risk that we take. Kaya nga, I think this is a very good uh, flat, uh, platform that, you know, Jello initiated to have this kind of webinar for at least to educate uh, co enthusiasts. So, yun na. So, pag nalusaw yung cactus natin, like, medyo may amoy, matubig, talagang as in nabulok na yung, yung loob, do not apply fungicide. As well as kung may nabubulok na mga halaman, like may, may pungent smell o talaga yung fermented smell na medyo mabaho talaga, never apply fungicide kasi it will not help. So, paano ba kasi nangyayari to? So, next slide please. Again, babalik tayo dun sa disease cycle. So, for, for, this, uh, for this matter, may nakita na tayong uh, disease cacti or cactus. So, nangingitim na siya. Uh, though, generally, pag yung nakikita kasi natin na, na symptoms na talagang nalulusaw na, that is a very advanced symptoms, meaning that might be the secondary symptoms, but, you know, as the disease progresses, dun pa lang natin makikita. So, but most likely on the onset or, or yung parang paparating pa lang yung sakit, may nakikita na tayong discoloration which is not normal to the specific uh, plant. So, for example, for that matter, may nakita tayong uh, disease cactus. And we assume that because this is a, a, a soft rot o kasi pag hinawakan mo yung yung ibang may sakit na cactus like it's feel like mushy yung parang medyo malambot na siya di siya dry pero medyo malambot that could be the onset of the disease now yung bacterial cell kasi itong itong picture na to this is the microscopy picture of Erwinia carotobora so si bacterial cell kasi is, it can be carried by again insect water splashes lalo na sa atin na mahilig talaga tayong magpatubig sa sa mga you know kahit Get newbie like or like other farmers or I mean growers. Gusto nyo kasi natin silang tubigan eh. Not knowing that we can, you know, that can uh, spread the bacterial cell. Of course, humans. Kaya gusto natin hawak-hawakan yun eh. Pinipisil-pisil pa nga natin, chinecheck pa natin kung ano na nangyari sa cactus mo. Tapos ahawak ka na naman sa ibang halaman. So again, you are contributing to the spread of the disease. Now, Pag dumapo naman tong bacterial cell doon sa susceptible na halaman and eventually, if we will give them the favorable environment for this pathogen to grow, then, ayun, that's the time na meron na naman tayong bagong cell. So, as the disease progresses, most likely uh, in plant diseases, yung the the first or the primary infection is parang di siya ganun, uh, di siya ganun ka alarming but on the succeeding infestation or infection that is the time na medyo medyo mahirap na control because the 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 population of the the pathogen already um uh, andun na and mahirap pa si dito sa 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 pathogen or sa microbes is Di natin sila nakikita. So that's the time. So it's always this, uh, parang meron talaga kami ko ano eh, parang slogan sa, sa, sa klase dati, like prevention, 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 and prevention. So tama, nakita ko kanina sa comment, like we have to sanitize before entering and after entering sa, sa mga sites. Especially pag di natin alam na yung sources ng, or the suppliers that we have, have, yung sa shipment, baka yun nga, baka nadala doon sa shipment. Kasi most of can, you know, can 
uh, live up to days or hours when exposed to the environment kahit wala yung cost kaya nila unless unless lang talaga kung merong mainit na sikat ng araw that it can disrupt uh, the bacterial cell ayun so so the the cycle continues hangga't hanggang merong sources ng disease plant di mo talaga mamamanage yung population ng fungal pathogen at saka ng bacterial pathogen. Yeah, next slide please. Again, may, may tanong na naman dito. So, ba't ba kasi umaatake ang, ang mga peste sa halaman natin? You know, to answer that question, you know, yung halaman kasi, we have this volatile organic compounds uh, at saka ang halaman normally, naturally it will always release these volatile organic compounds now these VOCs in the atmosphere can either repel o pwede niyang i-warn, i-warn yung pathogen at saka ng yung mga insekto na huwag kang lalapit sa akin ayan, I can produce toxin or it will attract pests and diseases. And this is what normally happens when a disease plant is observed in our area. Kasi nga, uh, next slide please. Yeah. Kasi nga sinasabi dito, Every organism in this in, in this planet are deserved to live. Now, during the the evolutionary development of the plant, because normally plant produce BOCs, and due to co-evolution uh, phenomena, yung mga insecto at saka microbio din, it will adapt for them to survive. Now, again, sabi nga natin it either repel or attract the pathogen or the insect pest. And if it is a trap, then that's the time we will be having a problem like this. Now, in, in uh, IPM, Integrated Pest Management and Disease, uh, disease Management Program, di talaga natin kailangan i-control yung population ng pathogen. Like, there is no reason to control the like zero population of the pathogen. What we are really aiming to do is to manage the population of these insect pests and diseases to not cause, you know, losses or damages to our plant. Kasi may tinatawag tayong uh, economic threshold level, for example, like, ilan ba kailangan insecto sa kada halaman para masasabi natin uh, damaging na yung population na yun. So, it varies, depends on the plant species, and it also varies, depends on the insect species or on the fungal species. Now, sad to know, wala akong mahanap na economic threshold level in terms of, you know, like concrete detail, published article on ETL, economic threshold level in cactus and succulents. So, maybe that is, you know, that is a gap maybe for us to fill in para malaman natin so kailan ba talaga ta natin masasabi na it can cause damage and ETL also is uh, tinitignan din namin to in crop protection management o yung pag paggamit ng mga pesticidyo it also depends on the ETL or based on the economic threshold level o yung ilang ba kailangan insekto para mag-spray na ako ng pesticides so that's also one important that sad to know walang established report sa cactus and succulents as well as on most indoor plants. But again, wala tayong control to have this zero population. But again, we can do managing them at below level or economic threshold level. Yeah, next slide please. I think tapos na. Ayo. So, at least tapos na tayo dun sa pagkakilala natin sa insect pests at saka sa plant diseases. Now, let's try to, you know, 
try to define some of the, the, the control measures or management that we can apply by knowing those uh, enemies. So, but before that, kailangan muna natin tong i-dissect yung pinaka-broad na, na generic term ng pesticides. Kasi, again, as observed in some fora, in some thread, in some comments, may mga commenter na, halimbawa, kitang-kita mo na yung sakit is, I know, like, nakikita doon sa, sa picture is, it, it has a, a presence of a uh, millibag. Pero nakikita mo doon, uh, may mga ibang uh, commenter na nagsasabing, okay, apply insect, uh, apply fungicide, apply dieting, which is not. So let's try to, you know, uh, digest these terminologies. Like, so pesticides is any or compounds, molecules, mixtures that are intended to destroy, prevent, repel any pest. Now, there are a classification of this pesticide based on the target pest. Of course, for insecticides, insects, herbicides, weeds, fungi, molds, fungicides, and so on. So, uh, I assume, because uh, we tackled the, the, the common pest and plant diseases, so at least pag may nakita tayong ganun, and based on this uh, slides, alam na natin yung tamang recommendation like i always say this to every time na mayroong session like pag di, di ka sure na mag-recommend ng specific product for a specific problem wag mo na lang i-comment kasi it can add to confusion and you are delivering misinformation instead of educating the grower for example the newbie so it's kind of frustrating na makakita ng ganun. And again, it's kind of frustrating pag gusto mong mag-educate in the social media, it's either ibabash ka lang. So I prefer not to. So at least we're having this kind of session. At least, you know, we can correct the, the, the misinformation that we, we gathered before. And I mean, di naman to para sa, sa akin, for example. It's on the on the safety na din sa, sa mga growers. Kasi using pesticides, may kaakibat kasi ito na risk. And as we go along, makikita natin to. So is I hope klaro to yung mga terminologies natin. So pesticide is the general term. Pesticide could be insecticide. Pesticide could be fungicide. Pesticide could be herbicide. So it's a general term to control pest and Pest could be sex, weeds, pathogens, and rodents or anything. Okay, next slide, please. So there is a general uh, general classification of pesticide based on use. Titignan natin based on this uh, definition kung pasok ba tayo or we, are we uh, legit, legit ba tayo mag-apply ng mga pesticides? Now, the first classification is the general use, meaning lahat ng products with the general use pesticide can be handled by the general public. But of course, with the label discretion, kailangan ba sa inyong direction? The second one is on the restricted usage. Ito namang mga pesticides na to are only handled by trained researchers like uh, researchers in the institution. Dapat dito gagamitin ng general public without the, without the knowledge on handling pesticide use, without the knowledge of proper handling of pesticides, Pag nakita mo sa label ng pesticides muna for restricted use only, wag mo nang gamitin. And of course, the last one is the banned pesticides. Ito yung mga pesticidyo na di na talaga dapat gamitin based on a certain law in the country and which are governed, for example, in the Philippines, we are governed by the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. And to tell you honestly, ang daming offense na nakikita ko within the groups. To tell you frankly, uh, wala, wala akong gustong uh, you know, someone, but this is my observation. 
based on the regulation and law under the the pest fertilizer and pesticide authority of the Philippines and dami pong nilabag ng mga growers natin dito sa Philippines. Yon. So next slide please. Now again, the classification based on hazard and toxicity is very important. Kasi makikita din natin to sa label ng pesticide. Uh, the, yung kagandaan kasi nito, it will interpret, may interpret natin kung gaano ba toxic yung ginagamit natin ng mga stisidio. But uh, the good thing in the Philippines is we, have, we don't have this category 1, category 2, and category Three. We only have the category four because that is one of the implementation of the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. So at least we are very safe uh, based on the registered product here in the Philippines. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, and based on that uh, category, again, makikita din natin to sa label. Dapat natin talagang i-interpret to because these are gabay. Gabay to sa atin how to use the pesticide based on the label. Sabi ko nga kanina, we are only having this category 4, the, the green one, that is safer, but again, it is toxic when high o, o, pag mataas yung dosage. Dose, I mean. So for example, in this pictogram, makikita nyo yung mga kailangan natin gamitin before handling, during handling, and after handling the pesticide. Ang kikita natin sa pesticide, like the, the first, malit ata, basta yung, yung, yung first picture is pertaining to yung lalagyan natin ng PCC jo. Dapat safe, hiwalay, at di abang mga bata. The next one is handling pesticide requires protective, personal protective equipment or the PPE. Ang kikita natin dito, dapat close toes kung nag apply tayo ng PCC jo. Dapat hindi bare hands, we need to use gloves. And of course, kailangan natin i-calibrate or using only the right dose of the pesticides. At ang misconception ng mga growers is, and we can discuss this further in the resistance management, yung perception kasi natin is pag, pag taasan natin yung dose ng pesticide yung it will become more effective in controlling or managing the pathogen or the insects. Di po yan tuto. So we've, we've done so many trials on different dosage, different rates of insecticide, fungicides, herbicides. And we only, and the, the conclusion that we get from that experimentation is may optimum dose or rate, like that is the most uh, effective rates. Tagdagan mo man ng ilang dosage pa yan, it will not increase its efficacy in controlling the, the pest. So meaning, nagsasayang lang tayo ng pera. And it will also create the resistance, resistant genes of the pathogen and the insect pest. So again, dapat basahin yung label at dapat yung dosage are based on the recommendation of the label. So, yung sa... Sa right side na may na picture, that is after using or during using of the pesticides. So dapat maghugas ng kamay after kasi there will be a, a drift o yung parang mga tilamsik ng mga pesticide na di natin nakikita na kumakapit na pala sa katawan natin. So the standard protocol in R&D, in research and development, after using a pesticides is dapat maligo ihiwala yung mga yung damit na ginamit at saka nagad. Kasi yung effect kasi ng pesticide will not in a, in a snap. So the the toxin will be accumulated in the bloodstream of the of the user and the fetal effect will not be uh, uh, makikita natin in just a year. No maybe five years or 10 years from now, that those accumulated toxins in your bloodstream, doon mo palang makikita yung epekto ng pesticides. And that is very true. It is also happening outside the plantation of banana plantation, pineapple plantations. To tell you honestly. Kaya napaka-importante na this, uh, this pictograph 
or pictogram in the label, dapat maintindihan natin yon. And the last picture is no smoking or no eating well after or during application. Kasi pwede kasi nating ma-ingest, ma- ma-ingest yung yung particles kasi di ba nag-i-spray lang tayo like most likely yung aerosol aerosol form ng uh, spraying nalalanghap natin yon or pumapasok yun sa mga uh, opening a natural opening ng mga ng ng skin ng tao so kaya most likely uh, yung ginagawa namin dito pag nagahandle kami ng pesticide is we use cover all goggles mask Uh, respirator, respirator mask and boots of course just to protect because again pesticides are designed to kill destroy organisms kahit sabihin pa nating very low level of toxicity to mammals pag naipon yung toxin sa katawan ayun so di mo pa makikita yung epekto ngayon but eventually as time goes by dun mo na makikita yon so it's a you know it this is also a reminder for us no na pag di na pag di kailangan gumamit ng pesticides wag na lang to tell you honestly for my you know started 2014 up to now di ako gumamit ng fungicide never but i i do use insecticide because me, medyo yung nasa, sa sa greenhouse nga yung condition ng greenhouse is a uh, very favorable to the to the Uh, population of the insect. But to tell you honestly, di, ako, di pa ako nakagamit ng fungicide kailan man sa mga halaman ko. And kasi yung yung, yung principle ko, ba, pag may nakita akong species or variety ng, ng succulent na very susceptible to the fungal rot or bacterial rot, so di na ako magkukolekta ng ganun. Kasi alam ko na it's very susceptible to my microclimate. And And di naman control environment yung 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 greenhouse ko kasi parang kwan lang siya just a small green a small space lang so most likely pag it's also a warning for us like for example though di 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 naman siya sinasabi kung wag na kayo magcollect ng gusto niyo but you know to to not risk your your health uh, over the hobby you know i mean this hobby should be a stress a reliever for us but you know as you know as practices ayun so ayun dapat maintindihan natin tong mga pectograph bago natin gamitin ang isang pesticide sa ating paghahalaman ayun yeah next slide please yep ah sige pa jello So on the next slide, we will base the insect, uh, the pesticide based on its systemicity. May dalawa tayo dito. It's either systemic pesticide, excuse me. It is either systemic pesticide or contact pesticide. Alam ko, uh, this is very rampant oh, sa mga group oh, like, okay, gumamit ka ng systemic fungicide. Okay, gumamit ka ng systemic pesticide, insecticide. Now, to give you, uh, you know, a short description of this, yung systemic kasi na pesticide, the active ingredient or the compound or the molecule of the pesticides will, you know, enter into the system of the plant and it will be distributed to the whole system of the plant. So, lahat ng parte ng halaman depends on two types. Pero, okay, kung So, meron kasi yung mga pesticides na only on the above, above uh, plant uh, Plant parts above the ground. Di na niya mapaprotektahan yung, yung root system. So may, may ganong stemic na, fun, na, na pesticides. Versus the contact fungicide, for example, pag dun mo lang natamaan yung, uh, example, nag-spray ka dito sa, sa dahon lang, no, that compound, that molecule will stay on that, on that dahon. So it will not uh, you know, spread to the system of the plant. Now, yeah, next slide, please. Now, halimbawa, so ginawa mo na yun, nag-spray ka ng uh, systemic fungus, ng pesticide and contact uh, pesticide. Sa systemic pesticide, lahat ng insekto na kumain doon sa halaman na nisprayhan mo ng uh, systemic pesticide, 
mamamatay yun. Kasi yun nga, uh, the, the compound was well distributed across the system of the plant. Pero pag doon walang, uh, pag yung uh, insecto is kumain doon sa dahon na di mo nasprihan ng contact pesticide, of course, di siya mamamatay. Kasi yun nga, there's no chance of acquiring the compounds on the plant. Kasi nga, localized lang siya. Nasa contact lang. Yun, yeah. Next slide, please. Ayun, ito. Ito yung gusto ko na part. So, I also shared this one last year. And uh, based on my independent research on, <laughs> on the most commonly used uh, insecticides in succulents and cacti was uh, this mist. Now, titignan natin ngayon. Kasi ang misconception ng mga growers is... We are more after on the active ingredient. Ito yung active ingredient. Ito yung pinaka substance na pumapatay ng mga insekto. Ito yung perception natin eh. Na like, oh, guma, gag, gumamit tayo ng iba't ibang AI para mapuksa natin yung pest. Which is not true based on research and studies. Now, to name a few, we have... Uh, I am not against with this product. You know? I'm just trying to educate uh, everyone, less na nandito ngayon, kung ano ba yung mechanism ng mga ginagamit natin. And after ng top, we will discuss on the resistance. Bakit may mga insekto na di na namamatay kahit anong spray mo? And one of the reasons to be blamed are the growers itself. Now, for example, we have this uh, seven, Lanate, Furadan, Advantage, Star cool G. I have I put here EPH registered because most based on my, you know, Research. Yung Starkle G is uh, Thailand based, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, in the regu in the re in the Philippine regulation, pesticide fertilizer and pesticide authority is we are not allowed to use products or pesticide products in the Philippines which are not registered in the Philippines. That is no, mabigat yun na. <laughs> That's a very uh, heavy statement. Pero yun yun totoo. Kasi before, for example, in our case, because, you know, uh, part of my current job is I am the one testing new molecule, new compound, new AI that are not present in the Philippines. So I, I must know the, the regulation. Para kami makakuha ng new molecule or new AI sa ibang bansa, Meron mo na kami isa sa bit sa FPA. Like we will propose a project or a study na kailangan namin pag-aralan tong new compound na ito. If it is effective in the Philippine condition, if it is effective in the Philippine species, or if it is effective on several rates. So ba bago kami makakuha ng ganong 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 uh, perm to use these compounds mabusisi mo na itong titig na FPA. Which is, this is not the case when we are using Starkle G. I don't know kung tama ako. I don't know kasi di ko talaga maanap yung Starkle G sa listahan ng registered product in the Philippines. Maybe you can, you know, you can comment kung meron nga. You can show me uh, a legit uh, document relating to that one. Because yung risk kasi nito, halimbawa, pag may nalason sa Starkle G, mo yung, yung label, it's not in English form. Again, bawal din po yan sa FPA. Dapat po kasi, lahat ng gagamitin pesticidyo, dapat po nakatranslate sa English o sa, sa language na kayang uh, to understand with the general public. In case of Starkle G, there are, you know, I, I've seen a lot of label na nakatay tawag nito, kay characters pa. Ang, ang sistema kasi, halimbawa, pag may nalason na isang tao gamit ng pesticidyo, ang unang titignan ng doktor is yung pesticide label. Kasi doon kasi nakasaad sa label kung ano yung antidote, ano yung gagawin. Now, in case of those pesticide labels na hindi naka-English naka character, how can we you know, treat or recommend antidote for that poison person? So that is the risk. I mean, I hope nakikita, nakikita natin yung risk 
na gumamit tayo. So, yeah, ayun lang. So, I, I Con- put here a PH registered question mark. Oo. Yes? Concerning yun, uh, Sir Chong, yung Starkle G, uh, may nakita na akong same active ingredient dito sa Benguet. Yung Starkle 20 SG, same sila ng active ingredient na Dinotephoran, something? Dinotephoran ang kanyang active ingredient. Uh, hindi siya in granule form na katulad ng Starkle G na hinahalo sa soil pero uh, uh, powder based siya. So through spraying yung application. Sorry, nag-break talaga eh. Uh, hmm. Pero yung on, concerning yung sinabi mo yun, uh, yung active ingredient niya, uh, meron na dito sa Pilipinas na ginagamit dito sa Benguet. Pero tama nga, na bawal na magpasok kung sino-sino ng pesticides without the proper uh, licenses and the approvals. Yes, yeah. Uh, tama yun. So, Yes. So in that case, sir Dan, halimbawa, may may tinatawag kasi kami na Jerry's product. Nag-break ba sorry? Yeah, okay, okay ka naman sa live. Okay lang, okay. Um okay, okay ka chong. Um it's just kapag ka tinignan natin siya sa live, medyo delayed yung live than what we are actually discussing the three of us. <laughs> okay lang, okay lang naman. Okay. okay. So, uh, Sorry, no good break. <laughs> it's okay. So, we'll proceed. Yep. Hello, yet? Yes. Uh, Pwede bumalik muna tayo, Jello, sa previous slide. So, may gusto lang akong i-explain dito. So, ito, this most commonly used uh, insecticides, may, may nakalagay dito, active ingredient. Ito yung pinaka, pinakasangkap ng pesticide na pumapata insekto. Now, sa, sa dose na column is, ito din yung critical. Kasi sinusunod ba natin yung recommended dose na nakalagay sa label based on the registration? Kasi supposedly, Bago kasi mag-register ng isang product based on the recommended dose, dadaan muna yan sa like uh, three trials or three experimentations sa Pilipinas. Titignan namin doon kung ano yung pinaka na dose rate. Ngayon ang tanong ko kasi dito, yung pag gumamit ba tayo ng mga ganitong product, sinusunod ba natin yung dose rate? Now kung hindi, Anong rate yung ginagamit natin? Are we underdose or we are overdose? Now, underdose and overdose can lead to insect resistance or insecticide resistance, meaning you are slowly creating a population of insects that cannot be controlled over the time using this kind of pesticides. So, sa madaling sabi, Para ka lang nag-experimento na maging superbug si Millibug hanggang sa di na siya mapatay-patay ng pesticidio. Yun yung possible effects if we are going to use the underdose and the overdose through. And again, makikita natin dito sa target pest, uh, okay naman siya kasi sucking, diba? yung pressing sucking na mouth part ni Sam, ni APHs, kuha siya doon. In the mood of action, now, this is the critical one, the mood of action. Hindi po tayo titingin sa active ingredients. We are going to study the mood of action. And para makasimpli natin yung discussion with the mode of action, uh, may sa, 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 sa next column is may mood of action group number. Meaning, pag lahat ng number one, they are of the same mode of action. Kahit iba't iba yung active ingredient niya. 
Meaning, sa lang yung mode of action niya. Now, here comes the last, uh, for example, the circle G. Yung mode of action niya is number four. Meaning, iba siya sa mode of action ng lahat ng nabanggit natin na insecticide. Now, this is very critical in planning for the control of insect pests and diseases kahit sa atin. Because, yun nga, this will lead us to the development of insecticide resistance. Ngayon, kung titignan natin, for example, si Light is a mitomil, yung active ingredient ni Lanit is mitomil, but yung, yung inatake niya is of corbosism, the neurotoxin. So, one pa din. So, group number one. Now, for furodan, active ingredient na is carbofuran, which is very uh, different from mitomil. Pero kung titignan mo yung mode of action niya, it will also attack the nervous system of the insect, neurotoxin. Still, falls under mode of action group number one. Ibig sabihin nito, kahit mag-apply ka man ng furadan, lanate, seven advantage, iisang mode of action lang yung inaatake ng PCCD na to. Which in the general rule in creating a program for insecticide and uh, fungicide, along the way, makikita natin yung sa, sa slides, dapat iba-iba yung mood of action, hindi yung active ingredient. Kasi nga, yung, yung logic behind this, parang pag tinitira, pinag, pag, halimbawa, pag inaatake mo yung population ng isang insekto, only the neuro, the, the nervous system, nervous system, nervous system. Through time, through the generation progresses, mag-recreate sila ng population that can be, you know, tolerate and the worst case, immune na sila pag inatake yung nervous system nila. Meaning, kasi nga, you always use pesticides having the same mode of action. Lahat ng population ng pest at saka ng fungi are very exposed to that one. And sabi ko nga kanina, the theory of co-evolution, lahat ng organisa will adapt to the environment for survival. So ayun, next slide please. Again, same with the, the principle for the, the fungicide use. Meron din tayong pesticide name, the active ingredient, the target pathogen, as well as the mode of action. Now in this case, Pancosev is a multi-site location. Uh, so meaning it will react with different uh, organelles of the fungal cells or yeah, because it's a fungicide. And yung code niya is uh, M03. Wala akong nakita kasi uh, based sa pag napansin ko sa mga group, wala akong ibang nakita ng uh, other fungicide except Dytin. So mostly uh, ito lang yung nakita ko. Again, this is a contact fungicide. It will not, you know, uh, go into the system of the plant and distribute uh, to the whole parts of the plant. So, kailangan natin, for example, kung nag-apply tayo ng, ng, ng using the contact one, is kailangan natin uh, lahat ng parte ng halaman is dapat matamaan to be and be effective for that for that sense. Yeah, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please, Jello. May, may isang pang ko na ko dito. Please. So yung mga sinasabi ko kanina, di ko yun gawa-gawa lang. So actually, we have a global uh, body for this one. Uh, we have the, the IRAC or the insecticide resistance something. And for the fungicide is the FRAC. So uh, makikita nyo dito, kung, kung titignan nyo to yung, yung link na to, Ang daming pwedeng basahin at saka aralin doon, especially if you are designing a program on your certain area. So, ayun. S siguro, uh, I, can, I can provide uh, Jello the, the PDF file for this one. The, all of the, the list of all uh, insecticide and fungicide. So, at least may, may copy a lot. So, siguro kung, kung sino yung gusto uh, magkaroon ng kopya. So I will just uh, send it to Jello and Jello will uh, you know, distribute to everybody kung, may, kung merong gusto. Yeah, next slide please. 
So I think that is the last part of the the, the pesticide saga. So sa amin again is pesticide should be the should be used as a last resort. That is always the you know yung uh, sinasabi na namin sa growers. And kasi meron pa naman tayong maraming uh, tinatawag naming integrated pest management uh, approach which is on the next slide. So actually marami tayong pwedeng gawin eh. Uh, the first one is we can, you know, install uh, yellow sticky crops. Di ba sabi natin kanina, babaeng milibag at saka yung lalaking milibag is very di different from each other, dimorphic. So yung lalaking milibag is may pakpak and a very small uh, insect. So lalapit lang si lalaking milibag unless mag-produce ng uh, pheromone si babaeng milibag. Now, one of the a good thing that we can do for that one, kasi alam na natin yung uh, biology ni milibag. So why not control the, the, the male para wala nang magka wala nang magbuntis mag you know. So yung gagawin lang dito is most of the insects generally insects are very attractive attracted to yellow colors. So yung gawin nating insect trap, I mean uh, sticky traps is kukuha lang tayo ng cardboard na yellow and we will just apply any sticky substance like wax or anything na basta anything sticky and then pag nakita yun ng mga insectong lumilipad especially the the small ones like the the male of the mealybug the male of the scale insect so as well as aphids matatrap sa dito kasi yung yung yun nga attracted siya sa yellow and then di niya alam na may sticky sticky bait pala na lagay doon so actually we can uh, you know, it's very handy and it's very easy to use. It's very easy to do. Pwede lang natin itong ilagay doon sa, sa mga kung saan yung halaman natin. And it, this is also a good approach. Low risk, I mean, no risk all and very cost efficient. And the next one is, yeah, next slide, please. Next slide, please. I also practice this one. So I incorporate uh, some repellent plants in my small greenhouse. I usually uh, plant marigold or tagitis. Kasi yung, di ba, sinasabi natin kanina na ba't inaatake ng insekto at saka ng sakit yung mga halaman? Because they are producing vol volatile organic compounds. All plants are producing volatile organic compounds. It's either repel or attract insect pests. Now, in case of this repellent, repellent plants, their only DOCs is to repel the insects. So, alimbawa, nagtanim ka ng marigold between rows or between uh, plants or anything you want to, to put the, the marigold. Yung VOC ni marigold at saka yung VOC ni succulent or ni cactus, magahalo yun. Kasi yun nga, it will release in the atmosphere. Isang atmosphere lang man. So magahalo yung mga VOCs ni marigold, which in fact, yung VOC ni marigold is a repellent. A repellent. So it will create a commotion or it will create na parang malilito yung insecto. Bakit, bakit may, parang, may parang gusto kong amoy yun? May di ko gusto kong amoy yun. So again, Kung mahahalo ng VOC ni Marigold within the atmosphere, of course, the tendency is it will repel insect. So there are a lot of plants that, you know, we can accompany plant to our succulents and cacti. And to name a few we have here, most likely these are those uh, herb, herb group or spicy group. And some of these, uh, you know, uh, aromatic plants like lavender and rose. I mean, marigold for this example. So it is very handy. It, it, it will add also static to your, to your, you know, to your setup. And again, very for zero risk. And you know, it's it's not only cost efficient, but it's also safe for for the growers, etc. And I think the last, uh, you know, uh, we can also use in the in our uh, setup. As uh, this is a very you know rampant. Uh, practice in the in the in the groups like you know 
pag medyo may pag ganun ka taas population ng minibag at saka ng scale, we can use uh, 70% ethyl alcohol for that one. And neem oil, uh, medyo watch out lang tayo sa neem oil because it's an oil base, meaning uh, pag masyadong mainit yung, yung atmosphere, yung microclimate, it can cause burn, burning of the leaves. And yeah, this one also, the uh, organic mild uh, liquid soap with distilled water. Titignan lang kasi natin kasi may mga recommendation na iba-iba yung uh, dilution or iba-iba yung rates for, for aphid uh, spray. Like most of the, you know, uh, widely used uh, mixture is one tablespoon of organic mild liquid soap or liquid soap could be and one liter of distilled water. Yun lang. Ganun lang kasimple. And then, pag spraying din kasi, napansin ko din, like, kung titignan mo yung ibang halaman, like, may mga talagang yung, uh, ano ba sa, ano yun? Yung residue. Makikita mo yung malalaking residue sa dahon. That is not the proper, the proper coverage for application of pesticide. Yung pinaka-efficient na way is only mesting. Hindi yung nagbubuo-buo na mga residue. That is, you know, that is not, it's a waste of money actually. So actually we've done, uh, again, another trial for that. And we, we compared the coverage of the, the product using mest, misting versus those, yung malalaking uh, droplets. The tendency for that is, the tendency is that Yung namumuong residue na yun, it can also cause burning through time. Like yun nga, kasi yung active ingredient dun is nandun. Like, you know, the concentration that should be put on the leaves, mas napasobra na siya. And very careful tayo dun, especially uh, pag medyo mainit yung panahon o yung, yung microclimate ng, ng space natin. So I think that it, uh, that's it for pest, insect pests and diseases as well as some information or you know proper handling of pesticides and yeah maybe before we we proceed to reset management maybe uh jello and sir dan can share something yeah mga oh, grabe thank you so sobra sobra nagkakagulo na sa comment section <laughs> <laughs> Nanda tayo sa yet. Paano daw paano daw? Oh, hindi okay lang. Ikaw, depende sa iyo. <laughs> Pero a question ko din kasi to personally, parang joke joke lang naman na question. Paano daw yung mga variegated na yellow plants? <laughs> Generally ganun Hello? kasi yung uh, yung at- attraction ng mga insects yung sa mga yellow. Kaya, oh, ganyan. Ganon din gamit namin. Ito, pang trap na mga insects, yellow. Pero okay lang yung mga variegated plants. Okay lang. Hindi <laughs> naman talaga. Oh, yan, ito yung sample ng pinakita ni Sir Chong. Yan. Yung ginagamit namin, uh, so it could be sprayed onto any yellow or any plastic surface or or white surface na mas maganda waterproof katulad nito yan spray mo lang uh, very effective madaming mahuhuling mga insects tapos meron ding yung katulad nito it traps yung mga uh, mga insects na uh, yung merong liquid sa loob na nag-attract nag, uh, naglalabas ng mga pheromones to attract the male insects so pumapasok yung mga uh, fruit flies na nag, uh, possible na vector ng pathogens dito sa trap na to so yung nakikita mong yung tinatawag nilang uh, rust fungus hindi yun rust fungus yung isa yun sa canker ang ang natawag doon ay uh, Botrytos feriadotidea or stem canker ng mga rootstocks commonly nakikita sa mga 
sa mga rootstocks na galing Thailand. Yun yung disease na yun. Uh, pwede mong i-manage through uh, co- managing the the uh, insect uh, population. So ito pwedeng pang-control. Kasi yung fruit fly na nagtutusok sa mga stems ng rootstock, sila yung nagkakalat ng disease na yun. Ayun. Ayan. Sir, Sir Chong, are you still there? Um, so... I'm back Wait. to the questions. Uh, wait, hindi ko ma-unmute si so. <laughs> ano nga ba yung mga ibang questions pala niya? Oh, uh, wait lang ha. Song, are you are you there? Nako wala pa. Let's try to answer some questions muna habang hinihintay siguro. Ah, uh, sige, wait lang. Wait, kasi Naka, hindi ko siya... Naka-mute yung... yung Naku, umalis yung siya. Um, I think... Ba- uh, babalik, babalik na lang siya. Pero, while we're at it, uh, habang hinihintay natin sa... <laughs> nakakatawa, lang, nakakatawa lang kasi yung mga... I'll start putting up some comments, ha? <laughs> nakakatawa lang kasi... Yung... <laughs> nakakatawa lang kasi yung mga ano, comments. Uh, Saan nakakabili? Pwedeng mabili sa agricultural supplies or sa online, Lazada, nagbebenta. Lazada ano, or... Anong tawag, anong tawag doon, Sir Dan? Ah, ito. Is, isa, madami. Madaming products. Mga yellow traps, sticky traps, insects. Ah, uh, ito, sige. ang label nito, nandun sa photo na sinend ko sa'yo, Supernet. Hmm. Yung mga photos kanina. Uh, yung Supernet Insect Sticker Trap. Tapos, meron yung na uh, pang pheromone Fruit Fly Trapper. Fruit Fry Fly Trapper. Madami kang mauling insekto. Uh, ano pa ba yun? Uh, madami. Sa mga agricultural supplies, pwede kiting maggumawa ka ng uh, kahit anong yellow um, wide surface tapos lagyan mo ng madikit na sticky material para dumikit yung mga insects doon. Uh, ganun, kinakalat namin sa mga greenhouse namin para doon sila dumikit. Oh, yun. So, pinapa, pinapabalik ko lang si Chong ulit on our discussion. Pero I'll post some more. Uh, Ayan, questions muna. Ayan, may question. Mm, How about hydrogen peroxide? Oh, ginagamit. Kapag paisa-isa lang, okay lang. Safe naman siya gamitin. Tapos hindi siya harmful sa halaman. Pati yung alcohol, i-dip mo sa yung kung gusto mong manually tanggalin yung scale, i-dip mo sa alcohol yung cotton buds tapos isa-isahin mo yung scale insects. Tapos hindi siya harmful sa halaman. Sir John, you're back. You're back. I-dip mo sa yung kung gusto mong manually tanggalin yung scale. Pag-mute ako. <laughs> oh, sorry, na-mute ka. <laughs> Ay, oo. Oh, oh. Naka-mute. Hindi, okay ka na ngayon. Okay ka na ngayon, Tom. Eh, may question ako nakita dito. Can we mix a uh, fungicide and insecticide? Now, it depends on the, the product itself. Kasi may, may tinatawag kami dito na uh, are the, the active ingredient are can be mixed to a certain eye oh, of the, the insecticide. Yes, compatibility. So, titignan nyo lang yung, kasi di, di kasi nakasaad yun sa label. So, mas maganda kung titignan nyo siya doon sa IRAC at saka sa FRAC. Or the technical profile itself of the product. For example, si, for example, si pesticide A. Isesearch nyo lang yun sa Google. Titignan nyo yung label na uh, pesticide A. Andun lahat ng technical profile na lalabas. So makikita mo doon na it can be mixed with this AI, it cannot be mixed with this AI. So kasi may tendency na may burning effects pa sa halaman. 
Ayan. Ayan. Tapos, meron tayong question dito uh, from Sir Jojo. Uh, for, for common grower... Can be mixed with this data? It cannot be mixed with this data. Sir Chong, naka dalawang device ka. Ata. Sorry. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> nag-upgrade ka lang sa cellphone ko eh. Oo. Uh, so okay, okay na tayo dito. May question tayo from Sir Jojo. For common growers, mentioned kanina, we have to know what is attacking the plant to give a proper solution. If we notice na may dark patches ang cactus but we are not sure what is it, what it is. So what is the most practical method to determine a pest, especially mga pathogens from a common eye? Yes. So, like, like uh, for example, one of the, the na pwedeng gawin natin, like, walang, walang special apparatus or technique yung gagamitin. Uh, you need, kung, kung sa medical term pa, is biopsy. Like, kuha ka ng yeah. tissue doon sa disease plant. And then, for example, if suspected mo siya like a bacterial rot, now what you can do is kukuha ka ng tissue doon, ilalagay mo sa tubig. Titignan mo doon sa tubig kung may bacterial ooze o may precipitation na mangyayari. Kasi nga, uh, bacterial cells are attracted to water. Lalangoy sila doon sa may tubig. Now, fact mo naman na fungal pathogen yun or fungal rot, again, kukuha ka ng disease tissue tapos magkukuha ka din ng uh, tissue paper, babasahin mo lang yung tissue paper, ilagay mo sa cup, and then you just place the cup covered or kahit lagyan mo lang ng may, may mga butas just to, uh, for aeration. And a matter of days or weeks, lalabas yung mga uh, structure na fungal, fungal structure, like cottony structure, may makikita kang parang medyo may silya o may mga, mga yun nga, uh, powdery something that is a indication of a fungal pathogen. Oh, pero yun nga, pero yun nga lang kailangan mong medyo mahirap i i minsan i-identify yan. Oh, so un- unless meron na siyang manifestation, hindi mo siya makikita, no? <laughs> un- unless nagrot na yung nagrot na yung portion ng plant mo, hindi mo siya makikita. So, un- unless meron siyang manipulation, hindi mo siya makikita. Kainig <laughs> natin yung device, Mr. Chong. Hirap yung ginagawa dito. <laughs> sa amin, Sorry. for Sir Jojo, ang gagawin ko, usually, i-isolate ko yung plant na yun na may symptoms. Uh, tapos titignan ko kung magpo-progress yung infection kung kakalat uh, yeah. or lalaki. Uh, maganda kung meron kayong section for parang possible na infected na plants muna. Uh, lalo na kung magpapasok ka ng bagong plants, uh, kung bumili ka ng bagong batch uh, sa amin uh, na uh, iba yung practice kasi ng uh, farm namin kasi uh, uh, very dangerous or uh, malaki yung impact kung nakapagpasok ka ng sakit. So, proper treatment muna uh, to, ng pesticide para mamatay. Tapos, bago namin i-introduce sa uh, lahat ng halaman namin. Uh, so, pag in your case, um, importante i-inspect na uh, fully yung halaman tapos isolate ng 1 to 2 weeks kung walang spread ng pest or disease tsaka mo ihalo sa mga collections mo. Okay. So may isa pa tayong question. What part of the packaging do we check for this color classifications? Background color po ba ng name mismo like the thing is red and seven is blue? <laughs> Hindi, mayroong color band sa, sa baba. Mayroong sa likod, yes, sa likod, yes, sa yes, baba yun. Brand. Mayroong hmm. strand sa baba. Oh, yan. Next question. How true that we should apply fungicide at least once a month to avoid fungal infection? Is it ideal to prevent infection or apply only when infection occurs? Hmm. 
for home collectors, kung medyo malaki yung area mo, uh, nasa, depende sa application rate din ng Punji side. Uh, uh, kasi pag nag-start ka na mag-apply ng Punji side, susundin mo yung application rate. Uh, for example, every five days or depende din sa season. Katulad ngayon, rainy season, mas frequent yung application. So, madaming factors. Pero pag, uh, pag um, kukonti lang yung halaman mo, you can do away without the fungicide or pesticides, uh, proper ventilation lang, aeration. Katulad ng isang practice ng isang Thai grower, just after watering, uh, gagamitan niya ng fan. So, yung astrophytums niya, the sooner na mag-dry off yung liquid on the surface of the plant, the lesser the chance, chances na magkakaroon ng infection. Parang ganun na practices to avoid using pesticides. Yeah, baka may input si Sir Chong. Hello, Sir Chong. You still with us? Uh, or apply only when infection occur. Um, mm, uh, kung mamahalin yung mga collections mo at saka you, you practice the safe way of uh, applying pesticides uh, and uh, yung proper PPE, protective equipment, and uh, using the correct dosage, you can do, or you can use yung mga prophylaxis na fungicides. Pero very important, katulad ng sinabi ni Sir Chong, to follow the uh, proper way of application or, or treatment. For example, yung systemic, kung nag-umpisa ka ng gumamit, you should use it uh, dun sa recommendation na uh, for, for seven times na gamitin in that uh, pag nasimulan mo na. Ganun. Ayan, for Sir Chong. Uh -oh. Hello, Sir Chong. Chong, can you hear us? <laughs> Ayun. Pag nakabalik siya, wag muna natin siya stock boy ulit. Pusin <laughs> na natin. <laughs> Kasi we're close to three hours now. <laughs> wow, ang tagal na. Patap patapos mo yung slide? Um, yes, last five slides actually. Um, last five slides. Pero Sir Dan, can you answer this? Kasi madaming, naka, madaming nagtanong dito eh. Can you mix fungicide and insecticide in one solution? Katulad ng sinabi ni Sir Chong, yes, pwede. Pero basahin muna kung compatible dun, based dun sa website na binigay niya. Merong mga insecticide, pesticide na hindi talaga compatible. So it would cause burning, masusunog yung halaman mo, or magka-cancel out yung effect ng both chemicals. So basahin muna yung compatibility. Depende kasi dun sa pesticides na gagamitin. Oo, oh, ayan. While we're waiting for Chong, I'll entertain more questions. So from Liza, totoo din po ba na dapat pa iba iba gamot para di na immune plant sa gamot po? Yes, tama. Uh, pinagpapalit-palit. Uh, kaya meron yung guide nila, Sir Chong, na sinusunod na merong a series of uh, chemicals or gamot na ginagamit. Hindi lang iisang type. Merong, merong uh, systemic, merong contact, at saka uh, pinaghahalo nila. Hindi lang consistently na ginagamit yung same na gamot. Saan Ayan. gagaling yung mga scales? Pwede po silang lumipad yung, yung source nila, uh, lumipad at lumipat dun sa halaman ninyo. So, nangitlog from neighbor, neighboring uh, na halaman nyo sa bakuran or pwede ding hindi nyo napansin na may malit na infested na pala yung isang na-introduce yung collection, na billing collection. 
kay Sir Jojo Malikdam. Ayan, nandiyan na si Sir John. Oh, wait. Um, i-hide ko muna to ulit ha, kasi we want to take advantage of Sean when he's here <laughs> to complete his slides. So, I'll hide the question first and then we'll get back to it. Uh, Chong, are you there? I'm back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sige, ituloy na muna natin yung slides mo para you can finish. <laughs> Ayun yung isang question kanina, saan ang galing yung scale? Oo, oh, oh. saan daw? Saan yeah, so daw? to answer that one is on the... Co- yeah, again, it boils down into the co-evolution uh, phenomenon. Now, in the presence of, in the yeah. pagkain, may kakain nun. So, for for a scale insect to to survive, it really needs to look for the food. Now, halimbawa na chempa niya yung cactus mo, yung succulent mo, it always finds its way to 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 be on that site to to you know to food to eat and to survive. So, yung question kasi like. Lahat nag exist and we are interconnected with each other. Though it's part of the natural selection, kung mamatay yung alaman, meaning it's a susceptible one, meaning pag namatay yung alaman, yung gen- genetics ng alaman, di na yan magpapasa sa, sa, sa other you know, generation. So again, it's, yun nga, yung sabi nga namin kanina is, parang we are not here to, to control the population at a zero level kailangan na natin to manage the population at a very, a very low, le- low level para yun nga, di siya ganun ka nuisance o problema sa atin. Ayun. Siguro, Sir Chong, before we proceed with the other questions, if we can proceed to the slides. Yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah, yes. so we're on to resistance yes. management. <laughs> so this is a new... Naku, nawala si Sir Chong. <laughs> uh, Chong, are you there? Hello? Ayan, we can Ayan. hear you. Hello? Naririnig ako? Yes, yes, yes we can. Okay, okay, thank you. So actually, this... Uh, topic was not covered last year uh, due to time constraint <laughs> last time. So basically, this is, you know, a, again, di lang to sa ginagawa sa Pilipinas, but across the globe. We have this resistance management. So I just put here some, you know, topics like resistance management neg- neglected and misunderstood by the majority of the growers. Now, it's in... For, for, for example, in human misuse of antibiotics, now we created a very hard to kill bacterium because of the misuse and underuse of antibiotics uh, in, the, in the medical uh, society. Now, same as with the agrochemicals or on the pesticides that we are using in our plants. Now, to begin with, resistance is an evolution process. For example, the population of a certain, certain pest or bacteria, fungus, insects, or weeds are adapting to the current practices that we are, you know, incorporating to plant uh, propagation. Now, we cannot prevent resistance, but the good thing is we can delay resistance and manage it. Kaya, kaya, kaya kanina, pinakita ko sa inyo yung mga listahan ng mga most commonly insecticides Ako medyo nawala si Sir Chong. Hindi mo gano'n yung connection. Oo, baka naloma. <laughs> Kasi mati 3 hours na daw. <laughs> Ako nakakonect sa charger. <laughs> Sir Chong, are you there? Katulad lang ng convention, nakat din. <laughs> Oo, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, 
Grabe. Ayan. Umalis sa feeling ko, babalik yan ulit. And hopefully, pagbalik niya. <laughs> Nandiyan na siya. Oy guys, thank you so much ha, for for hanging out with us. So far, hindi naman tayo bumababa ng, ng 50. On the average, mga 65 to 70 yung ating users. So thank you for... Um, Thank you for staying with, with us, uh, with this. Sobrang informative. Kaya talagang sinolo ko na silang dalawa ni <laughs> Sir Dan para sa isang session. Not like the last time na lima yung panelist natin. Um, so that we can really focus. So, ayan. Hindi ko kayang i-discuss to us. <laughs> Baka madami pang questions na. Oo, oh, oh, madami pang questions. Uh, actually, wait. Uh, let me put some more habang inihintay natin si Sean. Ayan, very timely, um, Sir Dan. So, since it's rainy season, kailangan ba maglagay ng fungicide from Miss Jacqueline? Hmm. Uh, Case-to-case basis talaga kasi. Kung sa aming farmers... Uh, necessary siya kasi we are growing by the mass mass uh, monoculturing pag ganyan sabi nga ni Sir Chong kung may food merong kakain so pag uh, pag uh, sa dami ng halaman kailangan talaga mag-apply tapos pag uh, pag yung mga halaman nyo ay uh, katulad ng leafy succulent Uh, ngayon yung season ng pagdami ng mga uh, pathogens. Din. Oo, tama din. Kasi mm. very humid. <clears throat> ngayon yung uh, mabubuhay sila. Uh, kasi yung mga halaman, katulad doon sa pinakita ni Sir Chong, naglalabas sila ng phytochemicals. Na, katulad na pag binugbog mo ng nitrogen yung halaman mo, uh, mag attract yan ng mga insect pest. So, wag masyado din sa mga urea or ammonia na sobra-sobra kasi magka-attract siya ng kakain dun sa dahon. Uh, so, pag yung collection mo ay kakaunti lang naman, hindi mo, hindi mo na kailangan mag-apply ng fungicide. Uh, proper aeration, proper soil mixture, tapos, ang importante, ang importante to prevent diseases, uh, kailangan mo ng clear roof. Uh, instead na mag-invest ka sa fungicide, um, mag-invest ka na lang ng panlilin sa uh, collection mo. Oh, ayun. So thank you, Sir Chan. Uh, Dan, uh, Chong, are you back? Chong, are you back? wala pa rin. Chong, oh, oo. Thing. Parang wala pa rin. Oh, <laughs> balik ka ulit. <laughs> Ayan. So kahit, kahit naman sa mga newscast ngayon, nangyayari to guys. So pagpasensyahan nyo na kami. <laughs> This is the, the new normal. So, ah, ayan. Wait, Sir Chong, are you back? Ayun. I'm back. Yon, so hindi ka na namin interrupt. Let's proceed. <laughs> Ay, hindi ko lang, hindi ko lang alam nung narinig niyo last time yung sinabi ko. Like we cannot prevent resistance, but the, the good news is uh, we can do. We we have a lot of things to do to prevent, you know, and extend delay the the man- on, on managing the resistance of uh, commonly used pesticides. Yeah, next slide please. Next slide, please. Ayan. So, uh, to coin, uh, the pesticides are also known as agrochemicals because these are chemicals used in, the, in agro-farming. And yung pinaka-work talaga ng pesticides or ng products or technology to, you know, para maganda yung connotation. This is also, uh, 
working on inhibiting the essential activities in the pest. So there are a lot of organelles, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, mode of action, site of infection in a certain cells of insect pests or in the fungi or bacteria. So yung ginagawa ng mga pesticide na to is nililimit nila yung mga activities ng mga specific target sites. Like for example, there are, I mean, there is a insecticide that can inhibit the calcium or the ion exchange of calcium in the in the muscles of the insects. Now, if that's happened, no, mapaparali sa yung insecto. Kasi nga, the, the rule of uh, the sodium and calcium ion in the in the muscles of the of the insects are for locomotion. Now, pag madisrupt yun ni, ng insecticide, ang effect is paralysis. Now, if the, the insects are paralyzed, no, it cannot, uh, no, cannot feed or it cannot uh, move back. So, it most likely mamamatay sa through starvation. Same with the other type of insecticides. So maraming sites na tinatarget ng PCCG depende na rin sa klase ng o active ingredient ng isang PCCG. Yeah, next, next slide please. Yeah, I think may, may picture to. So for example, this is on the molecular level or sa, sa isang uh, organ or cell ng isang uh, fungi because this is a fungicide, for, for example. Yun nga yung sabi ko kanina, ini-inhibit ng mga pesticide yung mga activities o biochemical activities na nangyayari within the cell of the halaman. Now, if there is a disruption o may uh, damages na nangyayari uh, during the process or the biochemical processes within the cell, malamang, di na mag-work normally yung cell. And if that's happened, affected yung buong sistema ng insecto o ng, ng pathogen. And the mode of action, I mean, and the active ingredient is the one that are capable of destroying or disrupting those biochemical uh, processes within the cell. Yeah, next slide, please. So this is just a very simple representation Kung paano ba natin unknowingly na develop yung mga insect population na supposedly susceptible na nagiging resistant. Now for example, on the, the first, in the upper part of the picture, uh, kung titignan nyo dito, may parang sprayer or atomizer na nakalagay AI. So lahat ng AI across the, across the application, isang AI lang to. So, Yung mga sa, nasa box, tapos yung mga bilog-bilog na, na gray at saka red, yung gray, ito yung susceptible. Ito yung mga mamamatay kung tatamaan ng pesticide. Now, in a population, no, though recessive lang yung chance or recessive genes ng isang organism na <clears throat> pwede niyang i-carry throughout the generation of population. So, nakikita niyo yung mga bilog na, dal na dalawang bilog na pula, that are the carrier of the resistant genes. For example, so ngayon, nag-apply tayo ng isang AI. Like for example, uh, sabihin na natin, uh, AI1. In the first generation, may nakita tayo yung mga insekto, nag-apply tayo ng AI1. Ayun, possible na matay yung lahat. May tendency na may, may, di, may mga population o insekto na di natin natamaan, so nabuhay sila. Titignan nyo sa pangalawang picture, buhay kasi yung dalawang nakared kasi nga, di carry, di carry the, the resistant gene. Now, yung isang, isang bilog dito na gray, ito yung possible na di natin tamaan ng insecticide, ng pesticide, so nabuhay siya. Now, ang tendency nito, uh, sabi ko nga kanina, for them to survive their generation, for, to generation kailangan magmate si lalaki at saka si babae. Now, ngayon, pag nag mate na si resistant at saka si susceptible na population, ang tendency is ma-immune yung next generation niya. Kasi nga, on the third application, gumamit ka pa rin ng same AI. Ayun, meron pa rin mga population na mamamatay, but eventually, makikita mo, each individual or parent or ops, uh, parent na nag-mimate ng resistant to resistant, 
on the last picture, the tendency is it will create a population of a resistant colony of insects. Kasi nga, all throughout the season, iisang AI lang yung ina-apply mo. Yung sa madaling sabi lang is, parang na-immune na yung population ng insekto. Alam niya niya kasi yung mode of action. Alam niya niya, o, oh, a-attackin ito yung uh, nervous system. So for me to survive, I need to adapt. I need to develop a resistance or tolerance on this kind of pesticides para nga, mapatuloy ko yung generation ng, pop- ng population ko. Kasi ganun, ganun yung, ganun yung parang uh, sistema ng insekto or any organism. For example, for, fe- for, for human, we are resilient and some of us develop resistance, for example, in, in some diseases. Ganun din dito sa, sa insekto. And yung pinakita ko nga kanina na listahan, they fall on the same mode of action. The same mode of action meaning a same target o site na inaatake ng pesticidio. So, yung ginagawa natin ngayon, yung practice natin ngayon is we are creating a very resistant population that eventually di na natin mama, mapapatay gamit yung same mode of action. Next slide, please. So, meron pa tayong naga, magagawa. So, we ha- I, I, I listed three here, yung tatlo. Yung pinakauna is, we have this, uh, for example, may, may, bagong, may bagong compound or may bagong AI or molecule na wala pa sa Pilipinas. Yung ginagawa namin dito is, test namin siya kung yung mga population ba ng insectos sa Pilipinas is susceptible or sensitive ba doon sa bagong compound or resistant na. So, for example, yung ginagawa namin ngayon is um, I have a, a, we, we have a project on susceptibility study of a certain product. Yung ginagawa namin ngayon is nangungolect, na, nagko-collect kami ng different population full army war across the Philippines. Like for example, every region, kukuha kami ng population ng insekto doon sa kada region, tapos ititest namin yung uh, compound against the, against the population of the insect. Ang tendency nun is may mga population na, mamamat, na mamamatay, so meaning they are susceptible. The, the compound can control the, the insect population. But there will be also population that cannot be controlled by the new molecule. Meaning, do namin aaralin bakit yung population na yun di mamamatay gamit ang new AI na yun, knowing na yung bagong compound is not present on the, sa Pilipinas. So, yung gagawin namin is either we will increase the recommended rate or we will not proceed to commercialize the product. So that is, yun yung pinakamadaling uh, magagawa natin to, to test kung yung population ba ng binget na milibag is uh, susceptible pa ba sa mga AI na ginagamit natin versus yung mga population dito sa Mindanao. Because there are cases, like nakikita sa group, like nag-apply na ako ng ganitong pesticide pero meron pa rin ako nakikitang made bag. So that is, you know, it's, this is a very hard statement kasi mahirap tong i-conclude the onset of resistance. Kami sa, sa R&D community, di kami basta-basta nagsasabi na may resistance na kasi it requires a lot of study, it requires a lot of uh, projects para lang makita namin kung susceptible o, o resist na yung colony. But based on the observation sa group, may mga cases na kasi, I don't know if it's an isolated cases or misuse lang ng, ng, ng technology. But may mga cases na a certain product cannot control the, the insect population of a certain locality. Yung pangalawa naman is may tinatawag kami dito ang uh, module or management guidelines para sabihin na natin Alam na namin, alam na namin na may tendency to create a resistance colony or population of an insect. So yung gagawin namin is maggagawa kami ng program based on the population, based on the life cycle, and based on the common practice. 
So ito yung pinaka-common na ginagawa natin in the plantation, uh, plantation stage. And the last one is, ito yung ginagawa natin ngayon. So we have this uh, uh, series of session to communicate with the growers and of course the farmers as well as uh, some UCS to give, you know, para may magkaroon tayo ng uh, knowledge dissemination. Kasi nga may napapansin tayo ng mga mis- uh, misinformed groups or misinformed individuals and our target is not to discriminate them but to educate them so so i am thankful for this kind of session kasi nga we can share we can reach more audience sabi na sabi nga kanina it's the new normal yeah actually it is real, really the new normal so ayun so pwede nating gawin to but on our label uh, in our uh, stage pwede nating I can share, you know, uh, some resistant program that we we applied, and of course, I hope uh, Jello will continue to have this kind of a uh, session. Of course, to communicate with the with the enthusiast. So next slide, please. Ayun. So, ito yung sinasabi kong guidelines kanina that we can, uh, you know, uh, incorporate to our current practices. Yun na, yung nabanggit niya kanina ni Sir Dan, it's case-to-case -case basis. Like, for my side, for the uh, research side, I will stick to, to the guidelines and the protocol that we will only apply based on the economic threshold level or based on the presence of the population. Now, in the grower side, especially on uh like uh, big greenhouses normally we cannot you know apply those type of program unless it is really needed kasi nga uh, it's uh it's like business for for most of our growers and it's yun nga, parang in the first place we need to protect the plant of course kasi yun nga, it will you know uh, loses for, for our side. Halimbawa, pag namatay yun. So, yung pinaka-common practice na ginagawa, na, na ginagawa most of us is on the first uh, scenario. Like, nakikita natin tong uh, arrow uh, pointing with a violet color, meaning that is a mode of action number one, hypothetically. So, for example, yung uh, nilista natin kanina, like, most of the insecticides fall under MOA same MOA, mode of action. Halimbawa, all throughout the year, ginamit mo yung MOA na yun. Not knowing the different active ingredients, pero ginamit mo pa rin because you don't know the, the principle behind. Ginamit mo all throughout the years. Now, the, in, the implication is you are exerting high pressure for the NSIC pest to develop its population or to resist on the technology or on the pesticide. Meaning, you are a big contributor for creating a mega pest that cannot be controlled anymore. So that is the most common practice that I observe in the groups. Now there is also this uh, second scenario. Now you have information about mode of action, active ingredient, but the yung kakulangan ng resources on how to acquire this type of insecticide, how can we buy this type of insecticides? Most likely, ito yung scenario number two. Like you have in the first generation of the of the population of the insect, gumamit ka ng mode of action number one, and because you have the idea of MOA or mode of action, gumamit ka ng mode of action number two. Now the case is, wala ka ng ibang magamit. So ginawa mo, in alternate mo la lang sa. So again, it's still uh, a contributing factor to the, the population of the insect. Kasi dalawa lang siya. Dalawa lang, pero hindi alternate mo. Now, this, the, the third scenario is, you know, is somewhat uh, similar to the second scenario, but medyo knowledgeable na yung gumagamit ito. Kasi, uh, for example, in the first generation, ginamit mo yung mode of action number one. Pero on the second generation, ginamit mo yung mode of action number two, which is correct. Kasi there are certain pesticides that indicated on the label based on studies and research na pwede mong gamitin yung ganitong mode of action twice in a generation. 
may mga ganong insecticide. Pero meron din mga insecticide na dapat gamitin mo lang ito once, but on the succeeding application, gumamit ka na ng ibang mode of action. So, nakita natin dito, may isang check siya. That is a good you know, practice itself. But para pa, para pa ma, 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 ma-avoid talaga natin yung creation of resistance, insect pest, the best scenario is on the last part. Itong, itong scenario number four is alam na ni grower yung uh, principle behind mode of action. Si grower may access na siya sa mga different uh, pesticides of different mode of action. Kaya medyo wide range na yung uh, resources ng gumagamit nito. So yung ginawa niya, every generation of the population in insect, gumagamit siya ng different mode of action. Kung titignan nyo, like first gen, gumamit siya ng dalawang mode of action. In the first year, and on the second generation, gumamit din siya ng dalawang mode of action. Pag ganito kasi yung scenario, may, may tinatawag kami rotation of the technology. May tinatawag tayong a resistant, break, a resistant breaker na, na insecticide for this case. And this is the ideal situation. Kung gusto talaga nating uh, walang, walang ma-create na population na very resistant to pesticide. Ang purpose kasi ng resistant management is uh, we need to, to prolong the lifespan of the technology. Like by proper using, by following the recommendation, the following application, yung technology is pwede natin gawing up to 10 years efficacy. Kasi uh, in the agricultural world, there are cases, for example, may na-develop na isang, isang pesticide 2010, but after 2012, nawala na yung visa ng pesticide because of mishandling and misuse of the farmers. No, we cannot blame the farmers. What we need to do as on the on the research community is, you know, to bridge the gap. And we are very lucky to have this kind of session na kaya namin mag-reach ng malaking audience without risking their, you know, their health. Kasi nga, gusto lang namin, kasi gusto talaga namin to educate, to educate the, the growers, to educate the, the farmers also. So our rule is to educate people. So I, again, uh, must preferred Mas maganda yung last scenario dito. Though, we can adopt the, the, the third scenario, but though, yun nga lang, kailangan lang natin siguro at least pag may, may chance na, na makahanap ng different mode of action, then we can do, we can, we can uh, insert that on the program. So, next slide, please. I think malapit na tayo. <laughs> <laughs> kapit lang, kapit. <laughs> Ayun. So ito na nga yun. So actually we are I am not di ako pwedeng mag-recommend ng brands. I I have I don't have the right to recommend. You know, it's part of my 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 job actually. So di wala I have nothing against with this with this product. I have nothing against with the the company itself. Pero yung gusto ko lang i-share talaga dito is uh, sa paghahalaman kasi is uh, di lang yung kasi yung yung propagation is an art and a science. So, art on the aesthetic value of the plant and science itself. We need to be knowledgeable on the things that we apply in planting or in raising plants. Kasi nga nasasayang yung resources and then we are risking our health. So, yun, yun lang. Yung, yung Yung payo ko lang is, kung alam na natin to, then I've shared the program itself, yung kanina, yung previous slide. And following this uh, very simple table, may number na dito. Pag same number, meaning same mode, uh, same mode of action, different number, different mode of action. And our target is to use as many as different mode of action to avoid resistance. So yeah, next slide please.
So it's basically a you know example example program. Though, yun nga I I nilagay ko lang dito is a uh, mode of action or group. I did not put brand names or any. But yun nga yung ibibigay ko na file document kay Jello is yung mga listahan ng mga uh, pesticide, insecticide, and fungicides that you can you know. Kung po gusto niyo basahin, basahin, basahin niyo lang. And then makikita niyo to dito. So kasi itong apat na application na to is based on the life cycle of the insect. For example, uh, most likely sabi natin kanina, yung life cycle ng most of the insect pest attacking our plants is from from 1 month to 3 months. And I listed here four different mode of action. For example, the first application is carbon meats, the second pyrethroids, neocotinidoids, avermectins, and the, uh, the mectins. Now, the application timing would be in a weekly basis. Kung nakikita natin na mataas yung infestation ng insekto sa, sa, sa halaman natin, uh, for small growers like me or for the hobbies, I, I will not recommend to use excessive pesticides on your, you know, on your, in your collection. Um, merely because uh, it is, you know, it is very risky for you. It is, though, di, di, ko, di, di ko naman, like, nangi, nangi, nangihima ako, but, you know, I am, you know, after of your help for that sense. Sa, yung sa akin lang, sa akin dito, for, for my case, pag, may nakikita na akong maraming infestation ng milibag sa, sa greenhouse. Doon lang talaga ako nag apply na following this program. Pero all throughout the season, pag wala akong makikita ng infestation, I will not apply any. Yung ginagawa ko is, kasi alam ko na yung, alam ko yung mga, alam, alam ko yung uh, favorable environment ng, ng, yung nabangit natin kanina, like the optimum requirement of the temperature for the mini bugs. Ginagawa ko is I, I I tend to to check my RH and my temperature inside the greenhouse. And halimbawa pag pag medyo mainit na like fatal to the, the plant. Uh, ginagawa ko lang is parang binubuklas ko yung uh, yung ventilation or vent ng side ng greenhouse para pumasok yung airflow. Tapos pag medyo mas na yung RH or yung so uh, atmosphere uh, relative humidity o yung moisture sa sa air sa sa loob ng greenhouse ay binubuksan ko lang yung electric fan you know to just to maintain the the low RH inside the greenhouse. So yun yung mga ginagawa ko ng practice because alam ko kasi yung alam ko kasi yung risk <laughs> ng pesticide and I'm working with pesticide for you know for how many years. And kahit, kahit kami nga, very critical sa amin yung handling. And nakikita ko sa mga videos shared in the group, they are, you know, handling pesticide using bare hands, you know, at an open air sa loob ng bahay without any covering clothes. You know, I mean, that is a very risky. So ito lang. So for example, you have um, observe a high infestation of any insects found on your uh, in your uh, area. We can use this uh, you know insecticide program based on the recommendation in the previous slides. Like the the more mode of action, the better. And I have noted this one. Uh, so at least four different mode of action is needed to ensure no development of insecticide resistance, no development to low risk. So, ayun, ayun, and I think that's, that's the last slide for the session. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Very thank you, guys. Hindi ko alam kung ilang beses ko dapat yung i-replay para matandaan ko siya lahat. So, ah, so, ang daming requests through PMs and through comments dahil tapos na yung presentation if you can show yourself. Hindi ko alam kung ilang pwede ko na makireplay. Para matandaan ko sa lahat. So, ang daming requests.
request to PMs and to comments. Dahil tapos sa web presentation, if you can show yourself. Hindi, nakita na nila ako kanina, di ba? Hindi, nakita na nila ako kanina. Naka-close up lang daw sa pisngi. Pisngi yan. Hindi, actually guys, sa laboratorio kasi ako. So, baka we have a protocol here na bawal makita na. Baka may makita kayo yung mga very high data dito na kailangan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but it's okay. So again, nakita uh, nila ako last year, di ba? Uh, oo, oo. Mahihiyain talaga 'yan si Sir Chong. Kaya wag na kayong masyadong demanding. Tatlong oras na nga siya nag-lecture, hindi pa kayo na content. <laughs> Ayun, pero may may mga let's just, let's just answer a few questions. I think na-cover naman natin lahat yung mga questions uh, before. But may may question lang dito from Doc Janet. Avermectin, same ba 'yan na ginagamit sa dogs? questions before. But may may question lang dito from Doc Janet. Hello? Ayun. Uh, go ahead. Yan, may nababasa ako dito, question. Av- a- 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 Avermictin, sing ba yun sa binibigay sa Doha? Ano yung Doha? Dogs. 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 Ah, okay, no. I- a- Avermictin, uh, we have recommend- different recommendation in plants and as well as in dogs. I don't recommend using the recommendation uh, using in dogs. Kasi different target ng, ng insect pest yun. I think it's more on the garapata sa asaw. Oh, yeah. tas I, I still have one question dito. Medyo madami nang nagtatanong nito eh. Um, this is from Sir Jojo and from some from other viewers. Ang question niya is about dun sa mga bagong kuha. Ito, yan. Very common habit ng buyers or hobbyists upon receipt ng plants from seller shipment. Binababad sa fungicide or pesticide. Is this habit correct or even helpful sa mga plants natin? May instant replay tayo. Actually, nabanggit na yan last, last, uh, last year. And okay. personally, I don't recommend that one. Ayaw ko talang i-recommend yan. What first is, you know the, the dosage of the, the right dosage of the, the pesticide. Second is, second is we are mishandling pesticide for that matter. Isa akin lang yung ginagawa ko, is talagang kinakwarantin ko sila. I, I, I have this uh, a small space na yung mga bagong yung nga, bagong ko sa binget, like I, I stay them in a, in a separate room away from my main collection para just in case, kaya pag may nakita akong uh, onset ng infection, I can treat them separately. <laughs> so parang COVID uh, positive din yan. <laughs> Kwa-kwaan din. <laughs> pero yun, pero uh, sa akin lang, yeah, uh, sa akin lang yun, but you can, I don't recommend that actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, like what Chong has mentioned, practice caution. Because we may not be experiencing the ill effects right now, but if we are mishandling pesticides and any other chemicals, it may get back at us in the future. So next question natin from Doc Janet. Meron po bang something that we can use to repel harmful insects like mealybugs and scales? Yung parang insect repellent. Yeah, actually, na bangit na yan kanina natin, and uh, Sir Ja, uh, Sir Sir Dan also showed uh, samples that are readily available in the agrochemical, uh, you know, stores. Mm-hmm. And Perhaps. yun along the slides, may yun nga. Yep. Mas maganda doc, doc Jeanette yung traps instead na instead na repellent. Yung ita trap mo yung insects.
Yan. So, can can you guys hear us? Can yep. can you comment? Can you comment ano mine? <laughs> <laughs> so guys, if you can still hear us, if you can comment on the comment section. So that we'll know and then we'll adjust accordingly. Okay, yes. Yes. So naririnig pa tayo. So because of that, um wala na akong iba pang question na uh, nakita from here and um just want to throw out some shout out um sir chong thank you very much for your time for spending time with us nawala siya bigla bago kung kailan ako nag thank you siya nawala sige let's wait yan So again, again, guys, um, I, I'll make this video available um, after this so that you can continue to replay it. Um, and ayon, for tomorrow, uh, while we're waiting for Chong, for tomorrow, watch us again, 4 o'clock. Um, sana wag tayo abuti kasi nung first natin, 2 and a half hours. Ngayon, 3 and a half hours. <laughs> wag naman sana wag 4 and a half hours tayo next week. <laughs> So bukas we are um, going to talk about gym nokalisium. So all of uh, if you have any questions um, about gym nokalisium, so we are going to be cho- joined by our panelists. So Michael is there, um, Florin is there, um, Prince Herona is there, and also Edison de la Cruz is going to be there. Ayon. So. If you have time for tomorrow, make sure uh, you watch us for Jim No. And then, um, meron na rin akong set na pinaprepare for the next for the next one. Um, so watch out na lang for the announcement. Um, but it's going to be a fun session again. Kasi medyo kulitan lang. Kulitan session yung mga next natin kasi medyo heavy tayo ngayon para maging light naman tayo on, on the next FB Live. So, Sir Chong, are you back? <laughs> hey, Jello, may tanong ako. Okay, ano? May tanong game? Ano yun? Ano yun? May, may pa-dinner ba? <laughs> <laughs> You're calling out all the sponsors, yung mga nanunood po, parang awa nyo na, maawa kayo sa amin. Paayuda. Oo, baka naman mayroong mga paayuda dyan, mga mamster, mga nag-share-share. Adil. <laughs> Ayun, so again, we are doing, we're, we're doing this just for the love of our hobby to make sure that our industry is... Um, still going um, even with all the things that's happening around the world. So, um, ayon. So we're doing this for the love. So if you can show us some love back, <laughs> sponsoring Sir Chong na pumunta dito sa Manila ulit. So ayon. So any any last words uh, from you, Chong? Yes. Yung sa akin lang kasi, kasi yun nga, uh, we are here this, in the scientific community to, to educate uh, people. Because sa amin kasi, uh, the gap between the community and the scientific community is knowledge. So we are here not to discriminate the, the, the mishandling of people on a certain technology, but we are here to correct them in a good way. So siguro, wag na lang kaming i-bash Halimbawa, pag nagko-correct kami sa comment section, yun lang. And then, ayun, dapat ma, may sa puso natin yung risk na ginagawa natin sa sarili natin by using those pesticides. Always follow the label. Yun sabi nga nila, wag, wag, wag mong patulan pag walang label kasi masasaktan. Masasaktan ka lang after. So, dapat check the label. And then, ano yun yun? Uh, mas mabuti na yung nag i tayo sa, sa hobby natin na alam natin yung ginagawa natin. Kasi, yun nga, this, this has become part of our life. Like, check natin every day, most likely, most of the time. 
So sa akin lang, uh, keep safe. Uh, please, please uh, follow the label, follow the recommendation, follow the the proper way of handling pesticides, and follow or use proper uh, PPE. Kasi para sa inyo yun. And then baka, baka I hopefully, hindi mangyari, baka within how many years, mawawala kayo sinong mag-aalaga ng mga <laughs> mga collection mo. So, most likely, yun. <laughs> And again, so, thank you, Jello, for this uh, chance. This is a very good Uh, you know, session, overtime session, and of course to Sir Dan uh, for, you know, having this conversation, exchange of ideas and practices. And uh, I hope, you know, we continue to grow without you know, pulling each other down. Thank you and okay. yun, gutom na kami. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> gutom na gutom na kami, guys. So, you lala move ipo-post ko yung mga address naming tatlo so if you want to share the link <laughs> hey Chong I only have one last favor for you before ko hingan si Sir Dan ng last few words can, can yep. you get to the camera kasi I just need to do a screenshot that all of the three of us are here <laughs> ay nalobat na ako nalobat na ako <laughs> photoshop photoshop mo na lang daw grabe nasan ka dali ah Haggard na ako. <laughs> Nasaan ba? Wait. Hindi pa, siya, hindi pa siya lumalabas sa live. Yan. Malapit na. In, in, in one, two, three, go. Tagal? Wait <laughs> lang. Yan. Ayan. Okay na. <laughs> Ayun, so thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, Sir Dan, what's your final words? Ah, nasabi na ni lahat ni Sir Chong. Pero pag sa akin lang, yeah. to manage diseases <laughs> and pests, uh, importante, importante yung clear roofing. Basta wag lang maulanan ng derecho. Importante, importante yun. To avoid the rotting, lalo na ngayong wet season. Ayan. Thank you again for having me. Thank you, Sir Chong, for the very elaborate and uh, informative lecture. Oh, ayun. So, guys, again, thank you very much. And Chong, uh, sabihan, sabihan kita pag... Uh, send mo yung address mo sa akin para meron makapagpalala move sa'yo dyan. <laughs> We don't want to make any fans after. So again, thank you guys for 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 joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our session tomorrow at 4 p.m. Sunday. Uh, we hope to see you again. Uh, we are going to talk about gymnos. So that's all for now. Thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Ito na wala na. Kasi <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, my God.